Louis from Carl's Army! <laughs> Louis from Carl's Army! Hey, 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 hey. Moonlit musings for sports mad vampires. <laughs> Factory shift workers. Never mind, hello, Chuck. And men with prostate trouble. Morning, Andy. What are you doing? Make sure you stay awake for the radio show that never sucks. <laughs> the Nosferatu mics on Talk Sport. Look at the light! Have you not seen the time? I have I've seen got, the time. I've got time to give you the rest of it, have I? Uh, no, you, you probably idiot. haven't. You cannot transport a lorry load of bread in the saddle bag of a bike. AM time on the breakfast show is different to uh, the time here. This is space time. It's right. the middle of the night, if you well, see what I mean. It's still AM, though. <laughs> well, it's still AM, but it's AM, mem, 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 if you see what I mean. I don't know. It's it's earlier than AM. It's space a donut. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and it's time to say a very, a very good morning to a very healthy Mr. Mike, a Porky Parry. Very good morning to Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. Where is Alpha Centauri, please? Uh, where is it? It's out in the uh, uh, it's, uh, outer solar system somewhere. It's where Stephen Hawking wants to send microscopic uh, a spacecraft to. I see. To to I see. So it's, it's, it's not, not Earthbound. Uh, it's three or four million light years away. Yeah. Okay. What I like about that, and we'll talk about that later on yeah. when our export uh, expert export, export yeah. expert comes yeah. in. Yes. Is that the machines that go on this mission mm. will actually fly at one fifth of the speed of light. Yes. Now we're getting here now towards time travel. We we, are. We've had this discussion we before. Are. The only thing that's stopping a human being from travelling back in time mm. is finding a spacecraft that travels at the speed of light and then a bit faster. Yes. Because if that happens, we can then go. Uh, to a place before it's actually happened. Well, the thing that puzzles me about this story is that the craft itself is called microscopic. Now, that yes. to me means the size of something you can only see under a microscope. So I don't know how we're going to get into something like that. Uh, no, 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 no. You'll have men on board these things eventually. Well, they've shrunk down. No, 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 no. I mean, you know what happens. You well, just what's get... a microscopic craft? Uh, well, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You understand. It's microscopic when you look at it from where it's going to be. But where it's going to be is... You oh, know well, what you happens? mean it's only microscopic because it's so far yeah, away? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely certain. I don't think that's right. Oh, well, how do you launch it then? How do you launch well, a, I don't know. A, how do you launch a grain of rice, you I'd, idiot? I don't know. Well, that's, I know. I know. Why, that's why we're going to talk to Dr Ian O'Neill. He's a yeah. space scientist who can explain all this. Yes, yeah. and the thing is, once it's off the launch pad, you know yeah. what happens then? What happens? You just don't well, talk how big about the launch pad if it's no, microscopic. It, well, that's that's because it doesn't work like that, you you buffoon. buffoon. So <laughs> so what happens? What happens is we put it in space, yeah. and then do you know what we do? What we turn our backs on it, and shrug our shoulders for twenty years. Really? Because it'll take literally twenty years. And now to I get... have to turn my back on you. Yeah, like yeah. something out of Goodfellas. Yeah, but you know it'll take twenty years to get where Stephen Hawking's wanted to go to. Yeah, right. 20 years. I, yeah, but I'm more concerned about the size. I don't, I'm not happy at the, the speed you... of light, mm. just how thing and, and to get out, it's to get out of our galaxy yeah. into another one. Yeah. And they think if we get into the next galaxy, that's where human right. life could be. And if it's microscopic there, what is it when it comes back? No, 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 it's not microscopic. It's microscopic in terms of... You're sure not looking down a telescope the wrong way. No, no, it's microscopic in terms of space ideology. Do you really? see what I mean? Anyway, look, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we will be getting uh, into let's that. Let's yeah. talk to you about the football issues. Yes. Um, yeah, great night for the Porky Jinx. Barcelona, well, who you tipped to win the Champions I League. I never did. Gone. Yes, you did. No, I didn't, You, honestly. like everybody else, said, no, oh, there's only one team in it this year. No. Yeah, you've said that no. on several occasions. I, no, you no, 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 several occasions no, no, West Ham, no. West Ham would beat Louis van Gaal's team. I corrected... And, uh, and Everton uh, be playing them. I corrected my prediction on Champions League after Ronaldo scored his hat-trick the other night. I said, any team with Ronaldo in it has got to win the Champions League now. They can't fail. Well, and right. it will be called well, the Ronaldo you did that. final. Well, maybe you did that last night. But yeah, I mean, yeah. before that, it was yeah. all about Barcelona. I don't think it was. But yeah, anyway, well. it doesn't, I didn't really care who won the Champions League as my team are not in it. Now, do you know I want to win the Champions you know League? It says here, the microscopic scale, yeah. which is from the Greek, uh, a small look. Yes. Right. Uh, is the scale of objects and events smaller than those that can easily be seen by the Ooh. naked eye? Yes. Requiring a lens or microscope to see them clearly. I thought we were going to talk about this later. Well, we are, yeah. I just well, we'll talk to about it later. Way. Thank you, yeah. Now, uh, do you know I want to win the Champions League now? Who do you want to win it now? It's obvious. Manchester City. Well, I've always wanted Manchester City to win it. Oh, Manchester City, because they're an English left. team. So, so uh, I would like them to win it. I also think who now... Do you, who would you like them to get in the next uh, round, in the semi-final? Uh, who do you think they're most likely easy to beat? Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, maybe, yeah. Bayern Munich. And then, and then I think it'll be a City-Real a Madrid final, yeah. of which uh, Manchester City Real. should win. Do you remember they nearly exactly. their first uh, venture into the Champions League and they were beating Real Madrid in the Bernabeu Exactement. until the end of the game, which, of course, they lost. Exactement. Yeah. Now, what I was going to say is, and I also now can firmly predict that Everton will win the FA Cup. 
they will win the FA Cup. Yes. Because they're going to beat Manchester United. See, but, I think Van Gaal uh, yeah. is now all dead set on getting some silverware back well, to Well, Old I'm Cup, sure he is. But to so, save his job. But so is Roberto Martinez yeah, to save his matter. job. Yeah, but it doesn't matter for him. Everton really. have got the better he's players. He's, he's finished. Everton have got the better players. Well, they did well last night, didn't they? Thank God we didn't go to that game. Uh, Do you know, if the th- you know that's the third game really? that we almost went to? Yes. Crystal Palace and Everton. And I'm saying this to uh, Andy and Jason on the yes. sports bar. Only one goal in three games. Yes. Yeah, not, a, not a sparkling fixture, I have to say. Second one was 1-0. Last night, nil. Nil again. Uh, week this on Saturday, this great team that you say uh, you know going to win the FA Cup. Week on Saturday, I should be at Wembley to witness uh, Everton play Manchester United. Oh yeah, uh, well, you've been invited, have you? I've been invited into the FA club actually. The FA club. Yes. yes oh yeah. Yes. That's where you insulted that guy from the Ukraine when I was there. Oh, that's you. right. Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 What did I call him? Uh, you said that the Ukrainians had no business hosting a tournament. Uh, because they didn't have any history of football. That's right, and they were and, uncivilised. And they, all, they were uncivilised and they all rode around on horses and carts. Yeah, that's right, I did, actually. And a guy yeah. from across the table went, I am the head of the Ukrainian FA. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, don't take it and personally. I, admit, I, I didn't think you were going to get out of there alive. <laughs> no, that's I true. I thought it was going to be a case of the old uh, you well, know, concrete overcoat. He had a few burly minders with him. He did. Any, anyway, that's by the by. Yeah. Um, I then expect Everton to beat them in a 5.30 kick-off to beat Manchester United, as we did, by the way, in 2009, uh-huh. when we went on to play Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, well, in of course, the final. Jason's team in the final. but uh, lost. Uh, well, we scored the fastest opening goal after 44 seconds. Yeah, we lost, though. Eh? Lost. We lost, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Drogba was very good that day. Yeah. Now, uh, but I expect Everton to get to the final and then play either Watford or Crystal Palace. Now, yeah. I'm not in any way demeaning... Either Watford or Crystal Palace. Is yes. that as far as you're prepared to go? It's not exactly a daring prediction. Well, they're I, playing each other in the other semi-final. Yes, exactly. Well, aren't you going to pick one? No, because because I think they're teams of equal status and stature, really, and equal ability. Well, I mean, you're looking down on both of them. You mean? I'm not looking down on anybody. Yeah, you are. I'm not. What I'm saying, I mean, it could end up as an Everton Watford final. It could. Uh, circa 1984. And that, a, and that was a draw last weekend, wasn't it? It was. It, it was a painful draw last yeah. weekend. That's right. Yeah. It's uh, not very glamorous, is it? What? Everton Watford. If that's a cup final. I think I'll be watching. I think it's incredibly glamorous. What Everton against Watford in the the world's oldest, you know, knockout competition? Toffees versus the Hornets. (sighs) And by the way, what is unique? It doesn't float my boat. What is unique about those two teams? I'd rather see Manchester United against Crystal Palace. What is unique about those two teams? Uh, They uh, both have uh, uh, Z Cars theme music. Well done, as 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 their music. So they can just leave the dressing rooms. So it'll be a bit like Borussia Dortmund against Liverpool. They can just have the. You'll never walk alone. Well, I suppose you're right. Now, what I was going to say is, I I expect Everton to beat Manchester United. I haven't got a problem with that. And people now start ringing up saying, "Hey, Porky, you've jinxed it." What am I supposed to say? Internal monitors. Am I supposed to say? I, I suppose I would actually. I'd like Manchester United to uh, to win. Well, and let's face it, Manchester United in the final of the FA Cup would be much better for the FA Cup than Everton. Well, it wouldn't really, yeah, it um, would, because it would have a much bigger worldwide audience. Now, listen, I wish Watford and Crystal Palace well. Either one of them that get through against Everton in the final, Everton are going to beat them. No, I, of Everton, that, I'm no, sure. Everton are not going to get to the final. I feel extremely positive about the future now because I think Everton <laughs> will now win the FA Cup. Yeah, but you always feel positive. About I think the we'll beat Manchester United. But you always think that, and then I think we'll beat either Watford or Crystal yeah. Palace. I personally believe it'll be Crystal Palace. Yeah. So I think it'll be an Everton Palace final, which well, I think is great. Well, yeah, but again, I think it'd be better to have Man United Crystal Palace in the final. Yeah, it wouldn't. It'd it be wouldn't. better for the FA Cup, and I'm sure the organisers of the FA Cup would rather that United were in the final. I think the Football Association secretly, and I can't speak for them, I think secretly they won't want a sort of battered, bruised, limping along, you know, confused and, and, and rather vacant Manchester United to appear in their final of their competition this so year. They played very well. And by the time. way, by the way, I've seen a piece in uh, a sporting journal saying uh-huh. that, um, well, first of all, you know that the value of Manchester United has dropped by £1 billion pounds since know that. Louis van Gaal took over July, yeah. two years ago. Yeah. But also, Manchester United's players. No, it's actually since last July that it's dropped a billion, I think. Uh, I think it's since he, st- no. since he got there. Uh, it's 400 million since the start of this season. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it's a, it's a billion over two years. Manchester United players have lost a total of 14 million pounds uh-huh. between them in bonus payments yes. during the Louis van Gaal regime. Yeah, so I'm not sure they're too happy about the way that the boss is running things. So all in all, I think Everton have got a great opportunity now to go through. But, I mean, if you're an Everton fan, you can't be too happy either because I mean, like, like, after all, I don't I didn't, didn't yeah. show it to you when we were in the Manchester uh, uh, stage arena, but yeah. I was going to put it up on the big screen. Then there was a whole lot of Martinez out. Banners at Watford. Did well, you not I see any of those? Of course I saw them, you idiot. Well, why haven't you made any reference to them? Well, All is not glorious have, in, have, the, in the world of Everton. Excuse me, it? I did make reference to them. When? In the pay-per-view this morning. When oh, I well, was... I didn't listen to that. What I do don't mean? listen to that. Why well, didn't you listen to it? Because I was asleep already. 
Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. It's a funny time to go to sleep. Funny though. time to go to sleep. Well, you forget that I work longer hours than you. No, so no, no. When no. I finish at six o'clock, I go home, I go to sleep. Most people, when they know that I am on the uh, record show people... doing the pay per view, actually get well, up to you listen know, to I it. I couldn't care less because I've, I've listened to your crap for you know three hours earlier. So why would I, I listen to another half hour? Extremely offensive. Offensive. Extremely offensive. Yeah, I'm not even going to refer to I mean, the to thing that. that I really object to. I might go into a period of non communication with you now. That would be great. You know what? The thing I object to most about whenever I do hear your pay per review is that you take all my ideas and you put, 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 produce them as if they're your own. You listen to all the things I say the night before and then you suddenly go on to the other Brazil where you're very nice and very kind and yeah, very sort of, yeah. you know, hail fellow well met and you oh, don't I call see. anybody fat or official four ride or anything like that. I see. And then you yeah. use all my ideas. Yeah, I've, I've never nicked an idea off you in my life <laughs> and the point is, it's if, I'm, time, if I'm reviewing newspapers, I generally talk about what's in the newspapers, not what drivel you've been spouting overnight. Well, well, if you you'd heard, well, if you'd heard anything about what I do between the hours of four and six, no, you would I don't. have known. I don't. You would have known. I don't. Why not? When I leave here, yeah. I turn my uh, top class radio mm. in my brand new Mercedes yeah. what car. Do you put talk radio on instead. Do you? Oh no 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 <laughs> no! I turn it to a music station. Yeah, what, um, Virgin. What? Virgin. Virgin, maybe. Yeah. Uh, to listen to some music, I can't stand the drivel that, yeah. uh, that you spout well, when I'm not here. Well, if you'd you're listened, lost. You're well, a man if, lost in space well, without you, me. Well, if you'd listened to the five hour, you would have known that we talked in great depth and length about what was going on in the New York Stock Exchange uh, regarding Manchester United's share price and why they're losing so much money. Yeah. You might have learned something. No, Numpty. I know it already. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Why well, are you looking very animated tonight? Well, I have. Well. I, 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 you know, I do talk to people who know about um, state secrets and all that kind of stuff. What, don't you, you mean the guys down at the old um, naval yard? Well, I don't want to go into it too deeply, yeah. but I've made an amazing discovery. The Admiral. Sorry? The Admiral. Uh, well, the that's the a... old fool that staggers around the Gosport uh, Yacht Club. Excuse me, that's, <laughs> excuse me, that, that's at my yacht club. Um, yeah. And, and it's not, uh, it's not uh, the Gosport is Yacht Club. Isn't it? Which a, yacht club is it? It's, um, it's another one. It's another Sto- one. Stokes Bay. Stokes Bay. Yeah, it's okay. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. OK. But anyway, anyway, the point is, now, now this is, I'm not sure if this is top secret information. Well, maybe you shouldn't give it out until well, you've checked. No, I think I will. I think I will. Uh-huh. But I'm sure that it is justifiable in me telling people this yeah. because of what it involves. Uh-huh. Now, di- now we've been to Cheltenham recently, OK? Uh, we have. Went to Cheltenham uh, we for, for the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup, indeed, yeah. we did. Marks a great day out there. Yeah, it's it very nice and uh, very good and yeah, all that kind terrific, of stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Now, did you know mm. that in Cheltenham, which mm. is, of course, a spa town yeah. in uh, Gloucestershire, and yes. it's on the edge of the Cotswolds and all indeed, that kind yeah. of stuff, and, uh, and you know, the, the race course is in that beautiful natural bowl, isn't yes. it? You know, natural sort of auditorium. Punch bowl type thing. Yeah, not punch bowl. It's called Presbury Park, actually, yeah. is the official name. Right. Did you know that in Cheltenham mm. there is not one single prostitute or what? one single brothel? <laughs> I don't believe that. It's true. I don't believe it. It's true. There is no city in the entire world that is without a prostitute. There is. Even in some places they've only got one. No, there is. Every place has got a prostitute. No. In Cheltenham, there aren't any. Are you any. joking? No. Are you telling me that for the entire week of Cheltenham Festival... Yes. Uh, ...and indeed uh, the, the second Cheltenham Festival... Yes. ...that there is no nefarious activity going on? There is no the sex industry in Cheltenham. I don't believe you. Do you know why? Why? GCHQ. GCHQ what? Well, GCHQ is based mm. in Cheltenham, so right? So what? Well, well, even more reason why they're... No, 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 no. ...the place to be crawling with no, 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 because there are so many state secrets... Uh-huh. Inside that building, right, and people who work there have to sign the official secret act. Uh-huh. They have clamped down the authorities, right? Right. And are you saying there's just no prostitutes uh, uh, walking the street? No, no, no. The authorities have clamped down to make sure there is no sex industry in Cheltenham, <laughs> so that there can never be. So where do you have to go then? So there can never be a situation. Where do you have to go? Where, hang on, a high level top secret worker from GCHQ. <laughs> can suddenly be blackmailed <laughs> by meeting a lady of the night in a bar at the, you know, the uh, the best hotel in Cheltenham. Really? Yeah. I've just been handed a piece of information on somebody else's information device. Yes. Uh, which says this. Mm-hmm. Cheltenham and Gloucester Escort Guide. Mm-hmm. A guide to the best escorts in Gloucestershire. Uh, it says escorts in Gloucester and Cheltenham available today. No, they're not. No. Well, they are. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
It, it is. It is. Well, so where's the nearest town you have to go to get a hooker then? Well, I can't answer that question because I have no experience of it. All mm. I can tell you is, are you really seriously going to tell me that the amount of the amount of punters who come to Cheltenham every year for yes. the racing, yes, uh, who may or may not be, uh, you know, uh, off their faces and drink, yes, uh, have nowhere to go to find such activity? Well, we don't all seek that activity anyway. It's the sort well, of thing that you don't. would think would no. be oh, a normal no. form of recreation. Absol- well, not but for me, it's not. But it's not no, to, it's no, not no, to let's most just people. Get something straight. Yeah. I've never been yeah. with a prostitute in my life. Good, okay? I'm glad to hear that. Yes. So you can forget that. No. No, but you think that but way what, no, about what other I'm saying people. is, is that whatever, wherever there is a massive sporting event, yeah. like no, the Cheltenham Festival, not in Cheltenham, you know, they will ship them in for it. Not in Cheltenham. Now, you know, we have You're talking sev- absolute rubbish. No, no, no. We have s- several levels of the secret service in this country. Yeah. Some of which you don't even know the name of. You know. Well, what about that guy that got in a bag? Yeah, the, exactly, exactly. Yeah. The guy in the bag who, who never quite know why he died. Did he suffocate or did somebody put him in the bag or whatever? You know. Right. But but he worked at GCHQ. I know. Right. Yeah. He also worked with the FBI mm-hmm. and I think the CIA yeah. in Maryland. Now, this is the level of secrecy I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, for that reason, I think you'll find mm. that there is a particular division within the Gloucestershire Police who are aware of the fact that prostitution and the sex trade is not permitted in Cheltenham. Really? In case... Well, why is there in a case Cheltenham, it and can, Cheltenham and Gloucester Escort Agency? Well, Escort may be, but it does oh, not so involve the sale of the sex industry. Oh, so there's escorts? Well, I've no idea. All well, I'm there's t- an all escort I, agency. No, I, all I can tell you is the sex industry is prohibited in Cheltenham Rubbish. in case... Well, technically it's prohibited everywhere, it, isn't it? No, 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 no. It doesn't happen in Cheltenham because... It's absolute nonsense. The number of people I mean, who, deal, who deal in top secret issues at GCHQ cannot... Uh, afford to be having a quiet drink in a cocktail bar in a hotel in Cheltenham be approached by somebody who may eventually be in a position to blackmail them uh-huh. for state secrets. I see. And that's that, that Well, that, thank you for pointing that out. Well, it's something that not many people know. Well, because it's not true. No, it, no I'm now, telling you. Now, let me you. read you a few uh, you. tweets uh, and texts because okay. uh, we're getting way off the subject here. Okay. Jim says this. Yeah. Dear MG, can you please ask Porky how many times Everton have beaten Manchester United this season? This season? Yeah. Um, what's what's been the record? Uh, we haven't. You haven't been. No. Them? no. no. Okay. No. So that's no. not a very good start, is it? Uh, Becky says this tonight was LVG's Mark Robbins moment that saved Fergie's job. I think Manchester United's name is now on the FA Cup. Sorry, Porky. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to think if we have been tonight. I can't remember the score at home. Don't think we so. drew one. Uh, sorry, we lost one nil away. Did we... I need to I think the question out. is put yeah. in such a way that it yeah. suggests that Everton haven't beaten Yeah, OK, United. OK, yeah, go on. Uh, here's one from Alan. It says, for God's sake, can you tell Porky to stop shouting? 15 minutes into the show and he's bursting my head already. No, I'm not Shh. shouting now. I have been talking very quietly about mm. uh, state secret spy issues, which I'm aware of, and you're not, and, and you don't even appreciate it. Well, no, I don't believe it. Johnny yeah. says, uh, um, Mike Graham always backs British clubs, to be mm. fair. Mm. I'm not sure if he even supports a club. Do you, uh, Mike? No, well, I don't really, but mm. I do support any uh, uh, British team who is doing well in Europe, because uh, yeah. similarly, I'll be sporting Liverpool tonight. Yes. yes. Uh, and then Steve says regarding the mm. uh, situation with winners and losers, I thought it was a masterstroke. He's referring to me nominating mm. you as a winner. Yes. Uh, how wrong was I? I think MG should take his medicine, gracious in defeat. It's funny you should say that yes. because. As much as I'd be very happy to accept defeat, mm. unfortunately there has been a, a, a sort of a fly in the ointment. No, there hasn't. Uh, there's been a, a, a spanner thrown into the works, as it were. N- no, because uh, the, yes. um, the the people, the the, in, the what you might call the independent invigilators, right? Yes, contacted me earlier on this afternoon mm. and said mm. uh, that in order for the winners and losers competition to be a valid competition, yes, the nominations have to all be real. Absolutely, right? they cannot be in any way a fantasy. Absolutely. And since Aston Villa are no longer having their Player of the Year awards, no longer is the word they were at the time well no not as far yes, as they we were. know they were no, at the time already, the competition no, they no, were they apparently already made the decision not to have no, them no it was on their website they just, they just hadn't announced it no no it was on no. their website anyway, when listen, we had the competition it's not my so, argument well, it's, well, listen, well just it's, hear out the argument it, and no, then you no, can it's come back it's a pathetic back. argument it's, it's not, not even an argument it's not my can argument can we have the result please no it's not because there is no result there is until a result. this is resolved no 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 there is a result at the moment I'll read the result at the moment no there is no result such an idiot at the moment right they're saying if uh, the, there are not enough nominees, then the the, uh, the matter has to be declared null and void, which would yeah. which would inevitably mean it's a it's a draw. No, basically. no, it's 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 it a, would a completely be declared nonsense. A draw. I tell you I, what, I however I however yes. think that that is probably mm. unnecessary. I, of course, I, you know I don't know that that's the way to go. And, and they've said to me that I can mm. use this if I wish, mm. um, you know, to, to, to either have well, a recount. Well, you're storing up a lot of ill will with the listeners no, on this one, all. trying no. to squirm out of no, something. No, no, I'm not you trying know? to squirm. I just want to do the things the right way because yes. basically what technically has happened is you have nominated as a loser mm. something that isn't mm-hmm. happening. 
mm-hmm. right? Something that doesn't work. So therefore, you have not filed the no- right number of losers. No, no so, I have. So you can either nominate a new loser, right? Yeah. And we could go again. Yeah. Or we could declare it a draw. No, 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 no. I wish you'd listen, Mike, sometimes. At the time mm. we had the vote, yeah. the issue of no, no, player no, the of the year... Ran, no, the vote ran all day, no, right? At, the, no, time, me, at no, the time we had the, the competition... No, but it runs until midnight. At the time right? we had the competition, yeah. at the time we addressed the audience of millions and said, these are our nominations, the winners and losers... three yesterday morning, yeah. I took it from the Aston Villa website. Right. The competition was open for player of the year. Uh-huh. Therefore, it was valid. Uh-huh. OK? Well, you say that. Now, as a result they, of but, me but bringing mid, that to the mid, public yeah, attention, yeah, they midway, may well have withdrawn no, it. midway through the but vote. But that's not my fault. Midway through the vote, it was withdrawn. Therefore, no, it wasn't. It was not valid. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. The announcement by Aston Villa was made in the morning. They had an intention to have a vote for Player of the Year. The result, everybody, of the latest winners and losers is Mike Graham, 48%. Mike Porky Parry, 52%. Woo, woo, yeah, woo, woo. But, but, it's a victory for the Pork Meister. Not, not as of now, no, because, I, because I haven't yet decided no, what ridiculous. to do about it. No, it's if you do ridiculous. that, we're, not, we're never going to have a winner's loser again because okay. all you do is right. gerrymander the whole thing. All right, let's, not, let's, let's, let's just cancel the whole competition. That's now. fine. All That's right. fine by so me. So I win by eight and a half to five and a half. If Hurrah! You, if you want. That means I've won three in a row. But I couldn't care less. Oh, dear. You know he's all grumpy. No, I'm not because you're being stupid. No, because I'm just pointing out. Because you want to cancel a competition you've lost. I don't. So what's the point of having a competition? I don't want to cancel a competition. Do you do. Would you like to take your ball and go home now? No, no, I'm not taking my ball at all. You are just being pathetic and stupid, insulting the intelligence of our millions of listeners and I'm not having it. No, not at all. So we'll, we'll just forget it in future well, well, because you can't act like a civilised individual. Oh, is that right? Yeah. OK. Well, thanks very much indeed for playing. This is Talk Sport. Still haven't signed up to Talk Sport's million pound football game? Why not? There's a million good reasons why you should. Download the Selco Predictor app now on your smartphone. With more prizes, more often and more chances to win. One million pounds. And as if that wasn't enough, play Beat the Presenter to win a spectacular additional Predictor prize. No! Download the Selco Predictor app now on your smartphone. One million pounds. The Selco Predictor. Sign up now at talksport.com slash predictor. Huge offers at American Golf. Bridgestone E-Series balls for only $14.99 and Adidas polos for only $19.99. Added cross shoes are just $29.99 and the Garmin S2 GPS watch is just $99.99. Plus get tailor-made Aero Burner drivers for only $139.99 and tailor-made Aero Burner irons for only $299.99. But hurry, offers available while stocks last. Buy in-store or online at americangolf.co.uk. Space. It's all around us, an infinite vastness, extraordinary dimensions beyond the realm of human understanding. We are but tiny specks in this gigantic void, marvelling at who or what created... Oh, you! Get out the back of my van! Oh, sorry. Your load's better off with a Vauxhall Movano, the large van with the impressive payload. Visit your Vauxhall retailer for more information. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out. Of course, Porky Vision coming up a little bit later on. Uh, yeah. I've been sent all sorts of stuff about uh, prostitution in Cheltenham, including well, uh, uh, a you piece know. from someone... Uh, uh, this is a piece from the Gloucestershire Echo. Yes. Sex crime is rife in Cheltenham, well, says police chief. No, you, that might be on the surface, but I'm telling you, I know. What do you I mean on the surface? Hey? And what do you mean on the surface? Well, I know these things, and believe me... You know, I can't say too much, but within the you know within the realms of people who look after state security, mm. it's it's something which uh, which is contained. Detec- believe me, Detective Inspector Sue Bradshaw of yep. the Gloucestershire Police yep. uh, said that despite their efforts to stop criminals trafficking women into mm. the town to work as prostitutes, mm. it is a persistent problem which will not go away. Yeah. There seems to be a trend in Cheltenham that every six to twelve months mm. a new prostitution business starts up. She said. Well, I can tell you that you know 
I can tell you. Well, I know things. It's, it's, as, simple as, it's as simple as that. Well, you may now, be now, privy to, to, to secret information that nobody else knows about. But talking about... Certainly they're pretending to be prostitutes. Well, anyway. talking about sex workers. Now, yeah. uh, I see the culture secretary, Mr John Whittingdale, yeah. is now uh, being reported upon in our uh, popular newspapers because, of course, the story about him having a girlfriend who he discovered yeah. that he didn't know when he first met her uh, worked in the sex industry. Yeah, they keep calling her a sex worker. They seem to yeah. have moved away from the idea that she was actually a dominatrix. Yes, well... I don't know why. Well, there's a picture of her here, um, trussed up, it says, in PVC and leather. <laughs> so, um, that's right. But what I think is most interesting about this is, you yeah. know there's this group of guys who are called ca- Hacked Off? Hacked Off, yes. And it involves people like Hugh Grant... Yes. ...and the other guy who's uh, Alan Partridge, right? That's him, yeah. And these guys, who I'll show these guys, uh, essentially they form this group to sort of try and suppress newspapers yeah. from reporting widely on the private lives of famous people. People right. like them, mm. uh, famous and rich people like them, believe that they should not be subject to inquisition yes. by a free press. Yes, okay, because it's not right to have their private lives, uh, no. you know, paraded all over the newspapers for titillation. For titillation, yeah. but when they want to promote a film or a, you know a book or yeah. a video or something like that, yeah. they'd like as much publicity as possible, yeah, please. That's okay, but yeah. only positive publicity. Yes. So what they're saying is, you really want to curb on the invasion of privacy into people's lives. But the thing is, I mean, Mr uh, Whittingdale, you couldn't get a more high-profile figure. He's a member of the Cabinet, right? right. They're now saying, hang on, we want this private life titillation exposed as massively as possible. Yes, because clearly there was some kind of conspiracy between Whittingdale and the papers to keep this story out of the papers. Well... Which is going to be a pretty hard one to sell, given that on the Daily Star, pages four and five... Yes. Uh, there he is. Uh, there she is, rather. Yes. Uh, with uh, various pictures in, in red latex, black latex... Ex- exactly. ...wearing hats, chains, exactly. dungeons, all kinds of stuff. Exactly. But so anyway... The papers seem to be all doing it now. Well, they're all doing it, but, uh, you know, some headlines say, PM, that's David Cameron, stands by Culture Secretary Whittingdale over sex worker revelations. What I'm saying is, the hacked-off mob, right, yeah. they should now be jumping up in support of Mr Whittingdale and say, oh, we started our movement to try and protect you from this sort of salacious yeah. gossip, what you do in your private life, bearing in mind Mr Whittingdale's a single man, yes. what you do in your private life should be down to you. The mm. problem is Mr Whittingdale is on the other side of the political divide right. to people like Hugh Laurie right. and uh, Alan Partridge, right. so therefore they've reversed their rule a bit here yeah. and decided that, no, as it's Mr Whittingdale, yeah. we think you should all be talking about his private about life, you know, and don't th- talk about ours, we can talk about his. And of course the thing that Hacktop have done, mm. uh, which is again shows them to be rather idiotic and, and, and very unknowledgeable about the way newspapers work. And they're, pure claiming, they're claiming that, uh, that this conspiracy works mm. like this, that the newspapers decide not to run yes. a story yes. and they hold it like some kind of threat or sword of Damocles, as they put it, over Whittingdale's head That's right. to say to him, well, make sure you don't bring any more regulations in or else we'll publish this story. Yeah. Which, of course, is rubbish because a piece has been written in one of the papers today by mm. uh, one of the columnists who said, well, actually, they have no, no proof for any of this. The reason why most papers don't publish stories is because they don't have the evidence. Yeah. And if they don't have the evidence, they don't actually run it. Yeah. And websites started publishing suspicions, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And lots of people saw that. But that doesn't mean a newspaper can publish something without being sued. Of course it can. And now they can publish it because, of mm. course, it's a different story. Yes. Now it's an allegation about this woman mm. rather than, uh, you know, any kind of facts about what actually went on. That's right. And, 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 and because Mr Whittingdale has issued a statement in which he's said that he does know the woman, but he had no knowledge that she was a member, a worker in the sex industry. And he, he's divorced, Mr Whittendale, yeah. and, and free now to meet whoever he wants. Some within our industry have said, where's the story? Yeah. Single guy, meets a woman, yeah. discovers that, you know, she may have right. a, a... I'm not a, one rather, of those people, by the way, because I think anybody... Rather a saucy past. I mean, any, any, any uh, sort of story that contains the words cabinet minister and dominatrix, yes. to me, is always going to be a story. Well, also, I would think that Mr Whittingdale, who is such a bright guy that he was... He started his political career as Mrs Thatcher's political secretary. You know when you see Mrs Thatcher coming out of Downing Street, giving everybody a wave yeah. on the way to the Commons to do Prime Minister's Questions time? Right. The chap who came behind him walked around the side of the car and got into the back of the car with her was John Whittingdale right. when he was in his 20s. Yeah. He was her political secretary, right. very bright guy. I mean, we knew him in those days when we worked at the Express. Now, you know, if you're that bright, I don't think you're dim enough to work out that the... I mean, surely, when you, you go, if you're going out with a lady for six months, yeah. don't you ask her something about her background or, well, you or what think. she does or where she comes from? And well, if he went anywhere near the dungeon, he might have had a, big, a bigger idea of what was yeah, going on there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff hanging up in the, yeah. uh, but, uh, in uh, the any, back room. Anyway, it's horses for courses. Now, in our favourite newspaper, The New Day, OK? Yeah. They have this box on the back. <laughs> box on the back. Uh, and it says, personal listography. And today... It well, is... yeah, we forgot yesterday's, which was List Your Three Favourite Flowers. List Your Three Favourite Flowers. What is it today? 
Well, to date, uh, list any recurring dreams you have. Oh, yeah. Why would anyone want to do that? Well, I mean, and how can you write them in one line? Well, why, why would you write them down anyway? Why, well, well, I don't understand the purpose of this box on the back. Personal no. listography. Yeah. What is a personal listography? Well, I mean, that's what they call it. Why do people write notes to themselves? You know, I heard a very funny story about that uh, newspaper today. <laughs> oh, yeah, go Apparently on. Apparently the editor, mm. uh, who, as I said, I've, I've known for some years. Yes. Alison, very nice woman. Yes. Apparently she's asked, mm-hmm. right, in the circulation mm. department, yes. not to tell her what the sales figures are. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's, a, that's a bit like asking, you know, when you put out an appeal for money for, you know, some terrible tragedy or something yeah. like that, and nobody responds. Yeah. It's all wrong. Don't tell me how much money we've no, got. No, it's all no apparently this has become a bit of a joke inside the organisation because she doesn't want anyone to say right. this is how many papers we're selling. Right, OK. And it's meant, I'm told, to be somewhere around the 50,000 mark. And the target and figure is 200,000. 200,000, yeah. Yes. I'm amazed it's selling 50,000, to be honest, yeah. because launching a new newspaper in the modern world when papers are, are shrinking so rapidly, their yeah. circulations, was a very brave move, and it had to be something different. And this is different, but it's appallingly different, if you see what I mean. It's yeah. unreadable because... The problem is, every page you turn to, your eye doesn't know where to go. No, exactly. It, it just, it simply doesn't know where to go. It, do you know what it looks like? It looks like some... It's like a sort of jigsaw. No, it looks like some kid has, like, got a few magazines that his mum and dad read and cut out the prettiest pictures, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then stuck them in an exercise book to make his own sort of paper, and that's how it sort of come out, if yeah. you see what I mean. Right. And if people think I'm being unkind about my own um, industry... I'm sorry, but I am. No, I don't think you are. Yeah. And they, and, they, and they also, I mean, sorry to go on about this, but, I mean, they've got another good news story on the front, a picture of a snarling dog. Yeah. Our dog laws must be fixed. Yes. RSPCA calls for legislation to be reformed. Uh, and then inside they've still got this ridiculous mm. letter from the editor when that's they right. said yeah. they weren't going to actually bother having an editorial. Yeah, that's right. They haven't right. got an yeah. editorial, but yeah. uh, they have got that. Now, here's a very good one from Kenny right. uh, on the on Whittingale thing. He says, where does the chief whip stand on this? The chief whip, Which I, I like think is it. very good. Yes, thank you um, very much Chris indeed. Chris in Welling Garden City says, yes. uh, I'm very disappointed at Porky's attitude. Uh, I've always enjoyed Porky uh, yes. on the radio, and I missed him when he disappeared for a while. Yes. However, I think it is time uh, Mr. Perry realised how fortunate he is to be on your show. Yeah. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah, very harsh. What's he talking about? He's talking about the indeed... fact that I object to you trying to abandon winners and losers because yeah. you've lost it. Yeah. Well, no, I haven't lost it. You have. We've now you declared. Lost, you lost 52 well, to 48. No, we've declared the, the competition over. You've no, just given up. No, 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 no. no you've I... just waved the white flag and said it's all over. No, no. I've won this one. No. But I refuse to participate in another one because every de- every time you lose, you try to cheat your way out no, of it. I'm saying, so the, so the competition is now over and done with. Uh, uh, and it's eight and a half to five and a half no, to me. It's not. I won the last one. Six. So it's no, uh, eight and no, half, that one, no, that one's up in uh, uh, up in the it's ether not, somewhere. It's not. Honestly, it's not. This is. This, I this, don't this, know why you're taking it so seriously. No, it's the stupidity of it all. That you know. Oh, you know, I didn't win it, so we'll just abandon it. So no, anyway, well, you were the one that said you doing. wanted to abandon it. I don't want to abandon it. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm not competing in it because it is so frustrating so you're, so you're that every it. time I win. You you want you're trying to make up some Not stupid true. reason? Not really. That you it should it never have week. happened. No, you won it last week. Yeah, but that's... No, no, I, did, I didn't come up with any reason. No, then. but because I won it on the second week, you just can't handle it. It's so, not we, true. so we'll forget it. It's not true. Right now, then, I want to talk to you about uh, the fact that I've told you many times that English should be the mother language of the world. Is that? Is you that... have told me that many times, right. and I've always disagreed with you. Right, guess who agrees with me? Jeremy Paxman. Well, Jeremy Paxman, that yeah. doesn't surprise me. Yeah, he's launched a savage attack on the Silly French. Silly old fool. He's, he launched a savage attack on the French. Uh, you know, Paxman's a good man. No, he's launched, not. He launched an attack on he the is, French. He is, a, he is a sanctimonious egomaniac mm. like you. And has described their language as useless, OK? He did that ages ago. He, well, I'm telling you why he's In done fact, it he now. he did that before you did it the last time. Oh, no, 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 no. He says, uh, English was the language of science, technology, travel, entertainment and sport, and the only language you must have, right? And the reason that he struck out uh, about it again is in an interview with the Financial Times. Uh-huh. Because he's talked to them about the value of having English to make business work. If you don't speak English, it doesn't work. And I keep telling you this. How do we know what the French Prime Minister is saying on a day-to-day basis when he stands up and addresses his own Parliament? We don't. What are you talking about? He's talking in French, yeah, and well, nobody in this get, country well, understands get, French. get it translated. When was the last time you cared what the French Prime Minister said? In the, I, I don't in care, the, because he French speaks Parliament. in French, and I don't care what Angela Merkel says on any other issue except sort of European integration and migration of peoples and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But we never hear from her, because she speaks in German. Well, we she should speak in English. Well, they're on the news all the time. 
Well, when was the last time you heard Angela Merkel speak? Uh, I haven't heard her speak for a while because exactly. she's been keeping a pretty low profile since exactly. it all went a bit wrong. Because in, she speaks uh, the German, nobody listens to no, her. No, that's not true. I'm sorry. She is still more or less the architect of the European Union and she's yeah. still more or less the person who calls all the shots in Europe. And that's why she's been keeping a very low profile. Yeah, well, she's keeping a low profile because she's got it all horribly wrong, we think. But Paxman came out with all this stuff ages ago. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but, I mean, he is... Um, I'll tell you why, why he's talking about it. He was interviewed in the Financial Times about uh, Shakespeare's 400th anniversary uh-huh. and the way the French might respond to it. And, uh, and the French, actually, who are having a, a celebration of Shakespeare's 400th anniversary, say it's very sad that Mr Paxman should be attacking our French friends mm. while they're celebrating our greatest writer and poet. Yeah. So they're quite up in arms about it, really. Are they? I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. I don't blame them. But, I mean, I, a world, as I've said to you many times before, where everybody speaks the same language, would yeah. be an incredibly dull world. And I think the, 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 but the all more these, languages that are spoken, the better. All these mad people now say, oh, I'm sending my child to university to, to, to learn Mandarin. Well, you know, that's all very well if you work in China. Well, it's a very good idea because there's an awful lot of businesses. In fact, if you had a, a, yeah. a, a business partner who knew Mandarin, yeah. you could be expanding your business into China, couldn't yeah. you? You could be selling, uh, buying and selling properties over there. No, no, which no. Which you can't do because I, you can't speak the language. OK, imagine us going to Beijing and doing a two mics show yeah. in Beijing, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It wouldn't work in Mandarin. Well, we wouldn't do it in Mandarin because we don't speak fluent Mandarin. Well, but why it would, work, why would but we bother it, learning Mandarin? But, it, but if you were going to go there, you yeah. would need to hire somebody who spoke Mandarin mm. to negotiate the terms, would you not? No. Otherwise, you'd be stitched up no, no. by somebody uh, who was no. speaking to you in words which you couldn't understand. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Oh, so you, you think you could negotiate with somebody speaking to you in Mandarin? No, I could negotiate with somebody speaking to me in English. Yeah. Who was Mandarese uh-huh. or Mandarese. whatever? Yeah, or whatever they are, <laughs> Chinese or whatever. You know what I mean? I would, I would. Mandarese. Uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. Mandarese I, wearing dungarees. L- listen, it's far more important for the Chinese to speak English the than the English to speak Chinese. Not a, well, not if you want to do business in China. Well, hang on, hang on. What's the biggest English-speaking nation in the world? Hey, biggest English-speaking nation in the world. I don't know. Well, it's America, isn't it? Well, if you say so. Well, they don't I, speak I, English. I, I would imagine they speak it is. A form of English. I would imagine it is. So, if the Chinese want to do business in America, yeah. very few people in America yeah, speak Mandarin or Chinese. Do you think when Rupert Murdoch went into China, yeah. he said, "Don't bother hiring anyone from China. Don't bother hiring anyone that speaks the language." Yeah, he got all the Wendy Deng, didn't he? Well, he got did. her to sort everything out because well, she was, spoke yeah, both, chi- both Chinese hire, and, yeah, and, and English. He didn't just hire Wendy Deng. Though. He hired a whole bunch of people who spoke the language in order to make sure the business works properly. Yes, but how many of Mr. Murdoch's executives? Do you think speak Mandarin? I can tell you none. In China? Yeah. I bet you at least uh, 56% of them do. Oh, no, I should think they all do in China, but I'm talking about the other executives in his businesses around the world, in Australia, right. in America, in Europe, in, in Italy and Germany, where Sky rules, in Britain where Sky yeah. rules. None of you them think speak... think in Italy they speak Mandarin. Italian? In Italy they speak Italian. Yeah, there you That's go. Right, yeah. Well, he knows more about it than you do. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will, of course, be a podcast coming out a little bit later. Porky Vision coming out tomorrow. It's the Porky Quiz on the American Civil War, uh, I believe, is the subject matter. It is indeed. And uh, here's one from Abdul. He says, I'm getting fed up uh, with this English should be everyone's language. Why doesn't Porky go around and teach the world uh, to speak English? Well, the world does well, speak. Most of the world does speak English. That's my very point. I'm afraid. Let's not have everybody speaking English the way Porky does. That would yeah. be very, very unfortunate. Yes. Uh, and uh, Nom de Plume in Camden says, "Evening, MG. Don't stoop to Porky's cheap and classless debts by null and voiding winners and losers this week. Be bigger than that and let him have his moment. After all, he has precious little else going for him." Well, that's too late, I'm afraid, because well, you've already uh, opted out of it, haven't you? Well, no, no. You've sent out a note now saying winners and losers have been declared null and void after uh, Porky withdrew from the competition. Yeah. Uh, MG has declared the winner this year. Fine, yeah. that's fine. That doesn't bother me. I'm not going to go into a competition where you change the rules all the time. Because it, it, you're the one uh, who wanted all the rules pointless. changed. No, I didn't want the rules yeah, changed. We used at to all. vote one way. You changed the way we voted. No, no, we I used didn't. to do one thing. You wanted to change it so you have a chance. Not at all. Not at all. I wish you'd be a, so grumpy about. You know, a, va- a valid nomination, which was completely valid at the time. You've decided. Oh, it's something to do with me. You didn't let me finish we'll, the point. We'll have an inquiry about. I would, have, I would, have, been, I would have been quite happy no. to, to let you win it. Well, but you, instead you threw a hissy fit. Let me win it. I won it on the popular vote. To you the threw people. a hissy fit right in the middle no, of me no, trying to explain no, it to you. No, I didn't. I'm not going to allow our millions of listeners to have their view subjugated by your uh, gerrymandering of the competition. Oh, Simple as that. OK, well, it's 3-0 yeah. to me anyway. Let's go to Mark Donaldson. Mr Donaldson, a very good morning to you. 
Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Hello, very, mate. Very, very good. Well Thank you. Indeed. How are you? Now, how many people in your little circle over there at ESPN thought that Barcelona wouldn't make it through tonight? Um, most of them thought Barca would go through. Um, I'm not going to kind of give it because I'm wrong most of the time, but I did say that this was the one tie, and I said it three weeks ago or, uh, when the draw was made, this was the one tie that, that Barca probably didn't want. Uh, reason for that is it's just that the, there's no fear factor for, from Atleti. The last time they played two years ago, they beat them, and uh, and you just see with Diego Simeone, I mean, that was an absolute bear pit today, mm. wasn't it? I mean, oh, I'm sure. Imagine being there in that yeah. That was phenomenal. It really was. And, I mean, the first leg really kind of set the scene, didn't it? Because it was bad-tempered. Yep. You know, old uh, yep. Torres got sent off. Several flying challenges were going in. But what's happened to this great Barcelona team that everyone said is possibly the best club team that ever has existed in the history of football, uh, who suddenly, you know, can't even win in their own league? They weren't good enough. That's the bottom line. Um, the, the first leg was key, you mentioned it, and, and the concession of the away goal to, to Atleti, to Fernando Torres, I'm not sure if they thought... I mean, bearing in mind that the first leg, they were in form. Mm. I mean, recently, they've not, they've not played well. They lost at Sociedad, the Spanish title race is back on. And I don't know if it's complacency or, or, or what it is, but they, they, they just wanted the races. Uh, and the front three didn't perform. Well, this I is the he, thing, Mark. This is the thing. This is what old MG is trying to ask you. Why is Messi suddenly become a non-scoring forward? Why is the team not purring like the Rolls Royce it's been for the last two and a half years? What has gone wrong? Is there some secret factor behind the scenes? No one knows. And if, if Luis Enrique knew that, Porky, then he'd fix it. Because I think that's now four games for Messi without a goal. Yep. Um, Suarez... Didn't get much service at all. Neymar was more content with diving all over the place as well. So yes. the, the, question, the question about Messi is the interesting one because when, no one knows what, what the answer is. He, he played in a couple of different positions. Munir came in at the weekend at Sociedad when Suarez was suspended. But Messi does what Messi wants to do. Just because he's on a team sheet as, or in a formation is playing wide of a front three, that's not where he plays. He plays all over the place. Mm. Is it just a blip? The Champions League was the big thing for, for Barcelona because they were pretty confident they'd get the Spanish title as well. You just wonder now, could that affect them in a negative way when it comes to the title, or will they now be fully focused on making sure they don't lose that as well? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the most interesting, Mark, interesting thing, Mark, is that the front three at Barcelona. I'm not sure that they've been called the, you know, the greatest team ever. I think that was the team of what was it four years ago when they won the Champions yeah, League Guardiola, yeah. at Wembley. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, but, but they were talking but, about it as if it was better than that. And, well, no, what they were talking about was they were talking about the front three being the most lethal front front three in the history of uh, football. Now, okay, maybe that's the case. But it's not working out for them. Something's gone wrong between these these front three because they're not going to be the champions of Europe this season. They might not even be champions of La Liga. Yeah, we've only got a three point lead now over Atleti. He'll be, and that's the interesting thing now. Can they juggle both the champion uh, the Champions League with the Primera Division? Look. The the three at Barcelona are the best in the world. There's no doubt about it. They had an off night. The service wasn't good enough from Rakitic, Mm. from Busquets, from Iniesta. But I think it's easy. This is the world we live in now when it comes to something like this. It's all what went wrong, why, let's look for a solution. There's very little praise in the world we live in. And I think when you've got a kid, a French defender called Luca Hernandez, Mm. a 20-year-old who's a French under-19 international, did not put a foot wrong up against that front three. It was him and Diego. Diego Godin against Messi, Suarez and Neymar. He was outstanding. Mm. And the two in the middle of the park as well, Gabi and Fernandez, they provided so much protection that there just wasn't enough space for Messi, Suarez and Neymar. So let's make sure that Atleti get plenty of the credit as well as having a go at Barcelona. So he's sort of the, uh, the French version of John Stones, is he? <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry. What's, what's, what's this? Four hundred million to get him in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Well, John Stones will eventually cost about eighty million quid. You know, eventually. because yeah, he's going to be the next captain of England. Now, Mark, did he have uh, a good game last night? I'm nil, sorry, did he I'm have sorry? a good game last night? That nil-nil draw. Uh, sorry, what's Queen that? Co- uh, what's that John Stones. Do? What are you talking about, John Stones? No, I'm talking about. I'm talking to Mark Donson about the European situation. Yeah. Where do you think Manchester City rate now in the four teams who are through to the semi-final in terms of their ability to win the competition, Mark? Depends on the draw. The best draw for them is probably against... Real Madrid. Atleti. No, well, it might be. I think... Uh, I don't know why, but I think Real will end up with Atleti, and I think Pep Guardiola will end up facing the team that he's about to join. Wow. I think he'll... 
I, th- I think he'll face them either in the final or the semi-final. I think we're going to see that. Mm. Um, where the Manchester City rate? Hey, they've got themselves here. It was a great win over Paris Saint-Germain without Vincent Company. Yep. He should be back for the semi-final. So they've got just as much a chance as, as anybody else. And I think they'd probably prefer it if the, uh, if the second leg was at the Etihad like it was against Paris Saint-Germain. Because I, I, would, I would back them to score mm. anywhere, whether it's at Bayern, whether it's at Vicente Calderon, or whether it's at the Bernabeu. Yeah. Have you seen any of the uh, any of the odds yet for it, or was that not going to happen really properly until the draw is actually made? No, you can get a seven to two for uh, for Atletico Madrid, which I think is not a bad bet if you fancy an outside. Obviously, you could if you'd backed it before the Barcelona game, you would have had uh, bigger than that. But Bayern Munich are the favourites. Then it's Real Madrid um, and Manchester City and Atleti are the two outsiders. So that's probably the that's probably fair, unless you think otherwise. Mark, do you think that it's natural justice? that the one team from England that has made it in the Champions League this season, at least as far as the semi-final so far, is the one team in England that has got a world-class player in Aguero. Um, Because we don't have any other world-class... We don't have any other world-class players in the Premier League, do we? I I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. But it's funny, we we spoke... What about John Stones? Well, John Stones will be a (laughs) world-class player. (laughs) He's still learning his apprenticeship. Yeah, Yeah. go on, yeah. We had this discussion a few weeks ago. Sergio Aguero would not get in the Barcelona lineup if the front three were fit. Mm. Some people would say he would, but he had his opportunity in Spain. And I'm not saying he was surplus to requirements. He wasn't. But there is an argument that Spain and Spanish football does not allow the best players in the world to leave their top teams. Mm. Discuss. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I think that's... Now, uh, do you mind if a, I ask him a question now? Well, please do, if it's a, if it's a good question, okay. a relevant one. It's a very not relevant, a load of rubbish. It's a very relevant question about a very, very big uh, situation going on tonight. Uh, it's all about the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. Mark, tell us uh, uh, how they're going to get on in uh, trying to get an NBA record. 73 wins in an 82-game yeah. season. Sorry, who are, the, who are this lot? Well, what are they, Mark, nice Mark, hockey team? Mark will explain to you. <laughs> right. NBA, it's called the National Basketball oh, Association. Oh, right, that one, yeah. So, so basically, there's, there's two huge stories tonight in the NBA. Golden State Warriors are going for win number 73, and that would, that would be a record. That would take them above the Chicago Bulls of 86. So that's a huge story. The other big story is Kobe Bryant's last ever game tonight for mm-hmm. Los Angeles Lakers after 20 years. And here's one for you. I've just checked StubHub. Now, the game's kick off, the game's tip off in about an hour and a half because they're, uh, they're both on the West Coast. The cheapest ticket to the Lakers game to see Kobe's last game yeah. Right up the back is $1,095 a couple of minutes ago. And the cheapest ticket for the Warriors game, Golden yeah. State against Milwaukee, is $280. So it's wow. a big night in the NBA. It, History beckons. It's amazing. Is that, uh, is that Cubby guy related to Cubby Broccoli, the guy who made all the James Kobe. Bond films? That's Sorry, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant? Yeah. Is Kobe it? Bryant. If he was in the studio now, yeah. he'd come up to his knees uh, and you wouldn't have the balls to say anything like that to him. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I think I'm frightened of people just because of their size. Well, you must be, because you can't be frightened for any other reason. Uh, Mark, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Mark Donaldson there. Thanks, Mark. To keep us, uh, Give my regards to Cubby. <laughs> this is Talk Sport. The Barclays Premier League on Talk Sport. 100% football all weekend, every weekend. Oh, my word! He's put it beyond the goalkeeper. Saturday afternoon from five, Chelsea versus Manchester City. Chelsea has scored! Sunday from one, Leicester versus West Ham. And that is absolutely wonderful from Dimitri Payet. Plus, around the grounds with live reports from every game throughout the season. Official partner of the Barclays Premier League, Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. Uh, Nicholas says this. Uh, it's called microscopic because it, at, at the distance it looks small, mm. uh, says Mike Perry. Uh, Nicholas says, so does everything ever known to man. Mm. Ha ha. Mm-hmm. I suppose he's got a point, hasn't he? Yeah, got a point there, yeah. Um, Steve yeah. says, we should vote if we want to keep winners and losers. To keep, vote yes. To cancel, vote no. Mm, yeah, I agree with that, that one. Yeah, that, definitely. Well, Let's have a poll start... on that, please. Well, you want to start another competition then? No, no, we'll just start the poll as to whether to reinstate winners and losers no, no, next no. week or forget it all together, OK? Well, yeah, no, I think we reinstate it next week. I think we should. Well, no, I think the public should vote on that. Right. It's their competition. OK. They then. vote after all. all right. right, I will read you some uh, tweets out now. Oh, okay. Here we go. The biggest loser is Mike Graham throwing his toys out of the pram because so he lost. I many toys out of the pram. Well, it says here that you did, OK? And uh, a load more like that, a load more like that. The two mics, it's funny how MG belittles Porky yet earns a living and getting first-class freebies 
Poncing off the back of the porkmeister. When was the last first class freebie I got? Right, you've when been was the last, poncing when off was the, the last. When was the well, last first class freebie I got? I didn't write that tweet, did I? Somebody so else. So you're did. saying it's not correct? I'm saying somebody else must have information. Must have information well, on I, you. I wish I did get first class freebies. Oh off you, yeah, I have sure. To say I don't. Sure. What I get is uh, trips to Crystal Palace, whereas I say out of three games, uh, one goal was scored, uh, uh, and that is not a freebie supplied by Mr. Yeah, Porky Parry yeah, at all. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, uh, Mike Parry, man of the people, on rightful champion. <laughs> MG's attitude, farcical. Yeah. That comes from Eklim. Eklim, thank you very yeah, much indeed. Eklim's obviously got a mathematical problem. Thank you very in much indeed. Champ- in order to be the champion of anything, you have to win it something. And and the one about, you know, you living off the back of the pork mice, so yeah. that comes from no one in particular. A very, very powerful lobby group in terms of... The Porky uh, tribe, yeah. Our listeners. The morons don't our know listeners. what to do now, do they? They're well, beside you see, themselves. You see, so somebody disagrees with you, they're no, a listener no, to the show and you call them all. a moron. No, I call the Porky tribe morons because they are. Yeah, These are the no. people that have multiple accounts well, I mean, uh, who I mean, uh, continually abuse everybody else on, uh, that's uh, on very Twitter nice, isn't it? Uh, who uh, doesn't actually agree with you about anything. That's very nice. Uh, here's one from Ian. Yes. Uh, it says, the wife is in bed and I'm in my man cave listening to you two planks. Okay, okay. Uh, should I go and Roger Eyes or listen to you two is his question. Uh, for goodness sake, don't get into personal details like that. If you if you listen, you're a civilised person, that's fine. Have a little drink or something like that. Now, listen, can we move on? Because I've got a very important issue. Yeah, go on. My, for, these are from my medical journals. Yeah, this okay. is something that will shock shock you, but it's something I found mm. and I think it deserves a wider audience, yeah, OK? okay. All right. A very um, eminent doctor, very eminent doctor... Yeah, what's doc- his name? Dr Christian Jessen, J-E-S-S-E-N, okay. has confirmed to me for the first time mm. that people, men, who go around cycling a lot, yeah. are in danger of shortening their penises. <laughs> Sorry, what's your problem? <laughs> How, how would that work? It, 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 it happens. How can you shorten your penis? It, it happens. <laughs> uh, doctor... No, sorry. You're supposed to take this seriously. I this am. is, this, this no, is I a am. medical condition. Yeah, is it? It's a medical condition. I remember, I've heard of the bonk. What? The bonk. Have you heard of that? No. That's something that... Because when I was a kid, there was a guy that lived in one of the flats downstairs from us who was a sort of semi-pro cyclist. Right, yeah. And, and he explained that if you cycle for a very long way, right. very long time... Yes. You're basically you're kind of... Your, 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 your saddle, if you like, for want of a better yes. phrase... Yes. ...goes numb. Right. Because you're sitting in that one yeah, position. Yeah, well, I should imagine. And they're, you can't, and, and they're you rather thin, those uh, yeah. sort of racing bike And you literally, and you literally, you literally can't step off the bike. You right. you, all, the only way you can get off the bike is to fall off it. Yes, OK. Because you're kind of, you know, well, pretty, me, pretty much paralysed. Well, this is different. It says the bad news is that there's actually uh, truth in um, jokes that have been made over the years about cycling affecting genitalia of the male. Yeah. The movements in cycling, together with the long, hard and narrow seats, which yeah. you've just been talking about, right... right can cause pressure on the perineum, OK? The perineum, yeah. Perineum. Yeah. This makes the penis and scrotum contract... <laughs> me, contract. The, the penis contract, and sorry, contract. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, this makes the penis <laughs> and... Scr- I think you get one of those in Cheltenham, don't no, you, when no, you go to no. the old brothel? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the penis and scrotum no, no, contract? No, 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 you idiot. <laughs> this, this makes the penis and scrotum contract. Yeah. That's what I meant to say, yeah, right? Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Meaning... The blood vessels and nerves that maintain erectus, which is an erection, right. also get compressed. Right. Okay, and it's called. That's not good. No, it's, this this is a medical term. Yeah. I'm not being rude here, but it is known in the medical industry as saddle balls. <laughs> Can't you take this seriously? This is a it's medical issue. Well, I this, can imagine this... that it wouldn't be good for your uh, bloxios, no. but I'm not sure about your penis. No, though. no, no. It's called saddle balls. Right. There's also lots of anecdotal evidence mm. to say long-term and endurance cycling can cause numbness, which you've been talking about. Yeah, the bonk. Yeah. And every temporary and even sorry temporary impotence. Right. Cycling jumps and stunts, like going down steps, yeah. you know, which stunt cyclists yeah, yeah. do and all that. Yeah, the BMX types. Yeah, makes the situation even worse. The medical advice is to invest in a really good but prohibitively expensive anatomically correct saddle. How does that work? What do you mean, well, one that sort of cups, shaped, cups your uh, genitalia? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shaped, <laughs> shaped, shaped uh, so as not to shorten Can your you imagine trying to get one of those from the local Halfords? When you go yeah. in and go, look, excuse yeah. me, I'd like yeah, yeah. a specifically uh, designed Ooh. saddle yes. to, uh, to, to to properly house my baloxios. Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. Well, that is, that is the kill, case. They think they'd kill the police. No, no, because, I mean, it, I mean, even before I started reading you the medical evidence, yeah. you were aware of the fact that there is a problem. Well, right? I, well only because mm. it mm. would seem 
very logical mm. that that kind of thing would yeah. not be helpful. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it's not just numbness. Yeah. It, 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 this numb is, nuts, they could call it. Numb nuts, yeah. This is medical <laughs> evidence. This is truly medical evidence yeah. that you can reduce the length of your penicular structure um, if, if you well, do... On a too, permanent basis. On a permanent basis, if you right. do too much cycling. Yeah. How about that? Well, that's a good reason not to do mm. too much cycling, really, Well, I would agree. Especially if you start off with not very large one in the first place. Funny enough, when I saw Dr Banner the other day, yeah. he advised me to get going on cycling. So do a bit more cycling. Yeah, really? he said it's very good well, for like you. Well, like stationary cycling. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 Well, you know what happened last... Uh, Two years ago, mm. the family bought me a, um, a bike. You, oh, the stationary bike, yeah. yeah but but it, did you not send it back in the end? I had to. It was yeah. bigger than a couch. Right. I mean, it was one of those that you sort of, you know, it was almost like a rowing machine, yeah. so to speak. You know yeah. what I mean? But I've decided now I'm going to get one. Uh, well, you might be able to but get, I'll get a, one with a very, uh, very comfortable saddle. You could, well, also, you could get a smaller one, probably. Which yeah, I get a smaller a, one that you just sit up on. Yeah. But you know, they have big, wide saddles to make it comfortable sitting on yeah. them. They're not tiny little saddles. Yeah, right. that, you know, look like. But uh, they say that those those long, elongated and very hard saddles yes. are better for for sort of endurance cycling because if you sit on the uh, on the more comfortable ones, yeah. you basically get. Um, I think you get a numb backside. But, no, no, you don't get quickly. as much propulsion in the muscles of your top of your legs. Oh, really? Because if you if you if your posterior is too comfortable on mm. a seat, yeah. it doesn't generate enough power down right. your legs to uh, to the pedals. Right. So yeah. what must it mean for all these professional cyclists, people like Mark Cavendish and others? What, you mean that they might all have sort of short and sort of... Yeah. Well, I well, I'm, I'm, well. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know where to go there. I'm not sure you think... Maybe they... Uh... Well, he's married to a former page three girl. Uh, indeed. But um, maybe that professional cyclists are very well aware of this yeah. and then take uh, precautions to make sure it doesn't happen to them. Right. I think we're talking here about the amateur cyclist, uh, okay. you know what I mean? Right. He's probably not got the right equipment. Mm. Mm. And I mean the bike equipment, yes. not I, his uh, own personal say. equipment, you know what I mean? It's certainly very worrying. It is, I yeah. think it is, yeah. yeah. Another good reason would be not to go cycling, I think. Well, I think, I think once again, I think it is our duty to bring these things to the attention Absolutely. of our millions of listeners. Absolutely. Yeah. Quite right. Uh, now, coming up very shortly, we're mm. going to have yet another vote going going on during the show, and it will get run only during the show, and this will be whether we should reinstate winners and losers next week uh, and start with a clean slate uh, for the rest of the season. And because, whether uh, whether I should be awarded the victory, I was so rightly... Well, it doesn't matter, because that's uh, all that's over a, now. No, no, that's no, no. That's all over and done oh, with. But the final score, the final score... The final score's of no consequence. ...is plus one to me. Well, no, well, you can't have more than one vote. This is a simple, uh, straightforward vote, whether we should reinstate the competition. And I should be awarded the last competition no, of the last series. you can't have two different oh, yes, votes in yes, one. Yes, We'll do that one next if, if people want to vote for that. Maybe what I'll do is I'll ask people if they want to have a vote on uh, whether you should have another point awarded in the game, in, in, in the overall loss that you've just suffered. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. <laughs> Well, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. Uh, is that a bit of All Saints? We no, that was All Saints, yeah. that. And guess what? They're on the comeback trail. Oh, are they? All Saints. Um, one of them was married to Liam Gallagher at one point. Uh, now, was that Natalie Appleton? I think it was, yeah. That was Natalie Appleton. Yeah. The other one is her sister, Nicole Appleton. That's right, yeah. And they're very good-looking girls in the girl band, All Saints, right? And um, uh, I'll tell you another thing as well. A few years back, I did... say this mug, by the way? What's wrong? It's all chipped. Sorry, what's your problem? Well, I don't know. Well, what, what are you telling me for? Do you well, think I care in the well, slightest? Your mug isn't chipped. No, of course it's not. Why because have you got the unchipped one. Uh, because the production staff here have a lot of respect for me. Oh right. And don't want to sort of you know make my mouth all sort of pitted with worried. scabs and sores swine by flu, drinking really. out of. Um, Did I tell you there's a swine flu epidemic at my uh, one of my children's school? Well, I hope you've removed him from his class. Well, I haven't. No, you can't. You can't do that. All they do is they send you oh, a so note. So you just let your child get swine flu, and that's, well, you know... they say that, uh, you know, that's not the, the, the advice that they give. The oh, advice yeah. that they give is just to keep aware of any flu-like symptoms. Is it really? Yeah, flu-like symptoms. Yeah, no, you can take your child out of school for no reason. They, they fine you. Well, I'm sorry, I'd take my child out of school at an instant if, uh, yeah, if somebody one, had swine flu. We were talking about the Appletons here, right? Yeah. So, All Saints. Now, oh. what I was going to say to you was, a few years back, I did quite a lot of work with young Joe Cole. Oh, yeah. Who, by the way, was a pundit, he was a pundit on the yeah. game. 
team last oh, night. On the FA Cup, yeah. On the FA Cup. Because he wasn't of course, bad, was he? Because, of course, he started... He was very good, I thought. He started his career at West Ham. Yeah. He was captain of West Ham at the age of 19. Mm. Unfortunately, they went down in that season, but they had the highest level of points, 44 points. What, so going down? For going down, ever. Well, that's yeah. a good statistic to have in your he, football career, isn't it? Well, he went on to be a, a star player. He won the FA Cup three times, three league titles, 55 caps for England. He did very well. He was never fancy... Was it Jose who didn't like him at Chelsea? No, Jose actually did like him, funnily enough. He had a very sparky relationship with Jose, mm. but Jose thought he was great. But anyway, the point of my story is, yeah. when I was working with Joe a couple of years back and we were doing some charity things and some writing and that kind of stuff, he took me back to his home in Camden Town uh-huh. and he lived in a block of flats where he was on the ground floor mm. and two young ladies he fancied grew up in the flat above. Oh, yeah. And they were the Appleton sisters. Oh, were they? Yes. Oh, right. So that was quite interesting. Oh, OK. In uh, Camden Town? In Camden Town, yeah, right. yeah, North London. We're going to play Dingwalls in Camden Town, not very. We are going to play Dingwalls in Camden Town. Look forward to it. Was it near there? Was it near the Camden Lock? Do you no. remember where it was exactly? Uh, yeah, I do. It was on. It was on the road up to. Was it like the road over towards Highbury that way? No, I'm, I'm just about to to say it, the road that goes up to the tube station with the funny name on the junction. Um. You know what, what I'm Chalk Farm? You're Chalk about. Farm. Chalk yeah. Farm. Okay, yeah, so that's it was right. on Chalk yeah. Farm that's Road. Right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. that's going up towards the Roundhouse from Dingwalls. Not is it? Far is away. it? Yeah, yeah, not far away. Yeah. Mm. So there we are. Right. Right. Now then. Uh, so what I was going to say is they've uh, got to get. Now I'm told that this is their third reunion. Does that make sense? Um, certainly would be so their second. I would say, but uh, yeah. it could be their third. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, now, what's happening here is... What are they doing? They've got a new record out yeah. called Red Flag. Right. But apparently it includes some old hits, does it? Does is, it? I don't know. Well, I know. Uh, is Never Ever and Pure Shores... Never, they... Never Ever definitely is an old hit. Right, yeah. OK. Um, Pure Shores... So it says here, it. Melanie Black sang the tricky vocal parts and sisters Natalie and Nicole Appleton married rock stars. Yeah. One well, married Liam uh, Howlett of The Prodigy. OK. And the other one married... And I, think, Le- and I think they're still together. Liam Gallagher. Yeah. Right? Right. Yes. OK. Anyway, um, now then, it's no surprise the All Saints got back together. I thought it was Keith from The Prodigy that one of them married. No, Liam, it says here. Oh, right, OK. Liam Howlett. Liam Howlett of The Prodigy. Now, it says it's no surprise the All Saints got back together. Few can resist not just the financial rewards of a reunion, but also the thrill of singing songs people actually want to hear again. Mm. But it is a surprise that Red Flag sounds like the work of a real band. All Saints were known for their fiery internal politics, particularly after the Appletons published a tell-all memoir. Uh-huh. But they must have a kissed away. Yeah, must have kissed away up because yeah. Lewis, whoever... Who's Lewis? Lewis. Uh, Chazney Lewis. Oh, yeah. Chazney Lewis found it in her heart to write One Strike, a superb pop song inspired by Nicole Appleton's divorce from Liam Gallagher. Yes, in quite a bitter way, apparently. Really? Yeah, the, the Liam uh, Gallagher divorce was heard not that long ago. Right. Um, and there was a lot... I mean, there was even... Um, I think the judge at one point actually said, you know, you guys yes. need to go away and grow up and really? sort this out properly. Really? So they were being very bitter and twisted about everything, you know? But, I mean, all saints were just like a bubblegum group, weren't they? Nobody took them seriously as musicians, well, did they? Well, I mean, I suppose if you were yeah? to compare yeah. them to the Spice Girls, yeah. you would say, that they were slightly more, they were taken slightly more seriously than the Spice Girls. They weren't quite as poppy as well, that. We took the Spice Girls very seriously because they were top, you know, a top yeah, band, yeah, top British well, band. No, but they were famous they were, throughout the world. Yeah. They were the four most famous women in the world for about two years. You yeah, know? no, they were. Mm. And, and even there was five of them, wasn't there? Mm. Five of them. That's right. Yeah, the five most uh, famous women right. in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the point about All Saints was that they kind mm. of got a bit more street cred, partly because of the songs mm. that they did, uh, and partly because of the songs that they covered. Because they they covered a Red Hot Chili Peppers song, and they were seen to be a bit edgier. And they were seen to be a bit edgier, partly yeah. because of the fact that one of them was going out with a guy from the Prodigy, yes. and one of them was going out with a guy from Oasis. Okay, that's fine. Now then, get... I mean, I, it's not something that I mean. If I ever hear the music, my mm. daughter used to quite like it when she was very young. Oh, I see. It's and that sort of stuff, is it? Yeah, I mean, if I hear it now, I don't suddenly go, "Oh, this is fantastic." You Would know, she pick not... up a hairbrush and pretend to be like uh, Natalie Appleton? Well, I, I think at one point, in fact, she once ran into um, uh, uh, Appleton and, uh, and Liam Gallagher on Hampstead Heath. Oh, really? And it made her. Day. My God. Because they were, out, they were yeah. out walking and she was like about, I don't know, she must have been about 10 or 11 or something. What did Liam say? Mad for it. They, they were Mad very nice, actually. She, she, yeah. my, she, she was with my mother and my mother said, well, go and say hello yeah. to them. And yeah, she yeah. was like about 10 or 11. Yeah. She went over and said hello. And they were yeah. very nice. Oh, that's good. And, and said hello. Didn't have a picture or anything like that. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. Now then, uh, Sean uh, tweets in and says, MG belittling Porky and his medical journals, this makes the show. Never retire, you two. <laughs> Rest of radio boring by comparison. Well, hang on, Sean. We, I, I'm not here. I'm not here to be belittled, OK? No. I, I try to inform, I try to address and help 
are millions of listeners with their problems. And the fact that old MG bursts into laughter when I try to address a serious problem is something I can't control. It's very true, yeah. Uh, Becky mm. has, has got an unfortunate tale to tell. She says, I've known a few men in my life mm. that have obviously spent a lot of time cycling. Oh, dear. Hashtag shrunken penis. Oh, dear. Because she says here as well, this must be a separate one. Is this Hobbit in my garden, uh, Becky? That's her. Yeah. She says, why do medical researchers waste time on shrinking penises and saddle ball syndrome? Why can't they find a cure for cancer? That's a good question. That would keep Porky happy. I for hope, God's sake. I hope you're not going to ask that to the guy who we get it on to so the space scientists we're getting next. No. Uh, Craig says this, uh, the penis contract, is that what Porky's on with talk sport? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's... Uh, no, it's, 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 it's contracted, as in... Shrunken in size. It's yes. nothing to do with a contract. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, Peter says, Could Porky please reread the entire Saddle Balls treatise using Michael Palin's lispy Pontius Pilot character in The Life of Brian? No, I don't think I, I, I can. Think, I don't think I'm not that. here to make fun of things. Yeah. Honestly, I'm really not. Uh, it says here, Where is this show going? Shortening one's ding-dong. I am really shocked. I say totally shocked. Well, I think what Irish one that comes from is saying... Are, are we still a family show? Right. And I think the answer to that is, yes, we are still a family well, show, is, are but, we not? But not all the tweets we get in our, yes. our family nature. Here's one from Gemma, uh, yes. uh, who says, does this picture prove your point, Porky? Uh, it's a picture of a guy uh, cycling naked. My God, that's disgusting. What do they do with the saddles when people go cycling around on bikes well, naked? Well, do you remember when they did that uh, naked cycling uh, demo? Uh, around yeah, London. They had to throw all the well, bikes away, didn't they? Well, no, I presume that they use their own saddles, don't they? Well, I don't know. Bring your own saddle. Well, yeah, it's, some, it's a subject I don't wish to discuss on a family mm. show, to it's be like honest, that. Did okay? you ever watch Sex in the City? Uh, bits of it. Like, Carrie was that, and all those yeah, yeah. people, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you must have watched it from time to time. I, I mean, did, yeah. Did you ever see that one where the guy sits and he's not wearing anything and they've had sex and he sits on the couch no. and she and freaks out because she's worried that, you know, he's going to somehow make a mess of the couch? Like bodily fluids will Well, just be anything, yeah. Just impregnated be, yeah. on a couch. Well, I don't blame her, that's yeah. disgusting. Because you don't sit naked on a couch, no, do you? of course you I don't. mean, you wouldn't do that. No, of course I wouldn't. It's disgusting. You wear at least a dressing gown. Of course I would. Yeah. Uh, I saw one episode once and I don't know whether somebody was hamming it up with her, but the one of the four girls in Sex in the City mm. goes to the gym, right? And she's working out in a um, it's it's a in a class which contains men and women, yeah. But she gets bored after five minutes and mouths to the bloke who's next to her, and they're both doing press ups. Mm. You know, do you fancy a bit of sex? Right. And he nods his head, and they go off and have sex in a changing oh, right. room. That must be Samantha, presumably. Is it the woman from Liverpool? I don't know. I, honestly, I, I, I don't know the, the blonde, individual the blonde, characters. The blonde one. But you know, the English one. No, I didn't know there was an English yeah, one, yeah, it? it's an English no, one, No, I yeah. never watched it to that extent, honestly. Really? But, I mean, I thought that was kind of unreal. You know, even the fastest mover in the world, yeah. I wouldn't have thought, could have uh, pulled that one off. Well, I don't know. You've never been in a gym, yeah. have you, really? Sorry? You've never been in a gym. Me? No, not yeah. really. No, I might be going to one, actually. I'm, I'm thinking of joining one after the advice from uh, Dr Banner to get uh, a cycling. Oh, you might uh, join one. Which one would you join? Would you join one up here or down no, the Stockbroker no, Belt? No, I'd, I'd join the Stockbroker Belt, better class of person. Well, maybe you'll meet somebody like Samantha. You maybe, yeah, that's quite a good idea. Yeah. Now, I've got uh, um, yes. uh, somebody called Happy Me who just wants to say thanks for the birthday wishes for William because you might not have seen this earlier, but yes. um, uh, apparently we've got another young fan. Oh, yes. Uh, who's, William, his name is. Right. It's his 10th birthday. When? Um, uh, well, it was. I think it was yesterday. Oh, OK. And, and so we wished him a happy birthday from the two mics. Did we? That's great. Well, yeah. William, can I offer that to you in audio fashion as well? Very happy birthday, my boy. Yeah, and apparently he's a massive fan, much to his mother's despair. Oh, dear. Why? What's wrong with well, his mother? Because you think his mother probably doesn't want to have, have him listen to the family show uh, contents. Well... Uh, penis, uh, envy and all that. Well, yes, but, I mean, we use proper <laughs> words, you know, because they come out of medical registers. It's not like we're trying to talk in any sort of smutty fashion or no, anything like that. Not. We wouldn't... No. Uh, we, we, we you know, enjoyed we, we, the duck rogerisation uh, from yesterday. No well, doubt. you know that was a that was nature. That was a that came from a, a natural um, set of scientific papers. Yeah. Now yes. I can give you uh, updated. Uh, oh look, the mm. number of votes cast forty seven. How about that? How many for? Forty seven votes. What for? For the whether uh, winners and losers should be reinstated next week. And what is the verdict so far? At the far? moment, seventy four percent, which is forty seven oh. uh, re re reversed. Okay. Uh, uh, versus twenty four. Right, OK, well, there you go. So at the moment, it looks like it will be reinstated, but we've got to let it run until the end of the show. Oh, indeed. Uh, yeah, so we've yeah. got another hour and a half to go. Yeah. Uh, coming up next, though, we're going to talk to uh, a space scientist, a man by the name of Dr Ian O'Neill, uh, who's going to be uh, talking about Alpha Centauri and how the exploration is going indeed. to work indeed. in microscopic craft. Indeed. This is TalkSport.
Drive on Talk Sport, the UK's only sports dedicated drive time with Sky Sports. The sharpest analysis on all the day's action from the giants of sport. Shane Warne is with us on the show. How are you doing, Shane? G'day, guys. How are you? Laser guided comment and rapid reaction from a nation of sports fanatics. Into the corner of the net. Drive home with Darren Goff and Adrian Durham. Who else? Weekday afternoons from four on Talk Sport with Sky Sports, the home of the Barclays Premier League. Everyone knows that all the best things come in threes. Three Amigos, three Stooges, three Lions. And right now, if you sign up to 888 Sport, you'll get treble odds on your first bet. Play with 888 Sport and harness the power of three with treble odds on your first bet. New customers only. Minimum £5 bet to qualify. Maximum £10 bet at treble odds. Bet at normal odds. Extra winnings added as a free bet within 72 hours. Free bets must be used within seven days and are not included in any returns. See site for full terms and conditions. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Rule up, rule up, ladies and gentlemen, and prepare to be amazed and astounded by Colin Murray's Carnival of Curiosities. Featuring a feast of fascinating facts and a farrago of fiendish falsehoods to untangle from the tantalising truths as Mr. Murray delights and astonishes you with his assortment of amicable acquaintances. <laughs> Don't miss Fact or Fiction every Thursday morning from 10 on Talk Sport with We Game for Men Extra Strength Scalp Foam, scientifically proven to help stop and even reverse hereditary hair loss. Contains minoxidil. Always read the label. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. If aliens are listening out there, then please beam messages into my head. Now, I know in uh, which sort of uh, high disregard you have for American sports, right? But I've got this from Rob. Yes. Uh, who says, they are playing your theme music at the Phillies baseball game at the moment. I thought I was going mad when I heard it. What theme Hashtag music? Hashtag global. Well, I assume that's, uh, uh, you know, the bongo rock music that we start the show with. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, isn't it good? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, Philadelphia's a fine town. Oh, Philadelphia's a great city. Mm. Uh, and not notwithstanding what W.C. Fields said about it on his grave. Uh, yeah, what was that? Uh, I'd rather uh, be here than in Philadelphia. That's right, yes. Yeah. That's right. Now, uh, we're going to talk to a man by the name of Ian Neal, uh, because uh, he is, of course, a space scientist, and mm. he's working with... Um, uh, he's Dr. Ian Neal, I should say, Ian O'Neill, and he's working with uh, Stephen Hawking uh, on this project to explore Alpha Centauri, which I read about uh, yesterday morning in The Times, and mm. I thought, this is a fascinating Tale. Absolutely. Because what we can't work out precisely is how it will work, precisely what the uh, the craft that they're going to use are going to be like. Uh, so, Dr. Ian, mm. uh, we thought you'd be the greatest person we could talk to to explain it all. Very good morning to you. Hi there. How you doing? Yeah, yeah very, very well, thank you. Very well indeed. Now, I mean, we see an awful lot of stories about the exploration of space these days. We see, uh, obviously, you know, suggestions that we're going to be able to uh, travel in time at some point in the future. We might be going to Mars at some point in the future. We might be colonising the moon. I mean, when I, I mean, most of those I can kind of vaguely understand. But when I saw this one about nanocraft and, and sort of micro spacecraft and, and time loops and, and, and you know, time, light years and all that, I had to confess to be completely baffled. Could, could you tell us how this is going to work, please? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm not actually working with Stephen Hawking on this, although I would have loved to have been asked. Nobody asked me. Oh, right, OK. But, um, but it's OK. No, cause I'm, uh, I'm well, maybe not after this uh, you will be. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, no. I, when I first heard about this yesterday, I was kind of um, kind of taken aback because mm. I've been I've reported on uh, interstellar projects in the past, and they've usually involved really really big spaceships. And of course, we're talking like decades in the future, hundreds of years in the future. You know, this is always something that's going to happen in the distant future because we don't have the technology yet. Mm. But what the, what Stephen Hawking is going to do, and he's teamed up with um, with a Russian billionaire, Yuri, Yuri Milner, and um, and a few other very, very prominent guys like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, the founder of Facebook, and all, right. all these guys are really teaming together to put together these tiny, tiny probes and fire them by laser at... Um, our, our nearest neighbor of star, so uh, um, Alpha Centauri. And they reckon they can get them there in around about 20 years, which is incredible considering using current technology to get to a nearest star, it would take us like 30,000 years. So obviously there's going to have to be some leaps 
in technology and they reckon they've got an idea of doing it and, and they're kind of like in, investigating it. They've also put a lot of money behind it, $100 million, which isn't really to be sniffed at. So obviously they've got something in mind. The end product may not look like they've got in mind at the moment, but it's certainly interesting. I mean, it's exciting. It's interesting. It gets people interested in science, which is no bad thing. So, Doctor, how big are these nano um, craft, these gram scale nano craft? What, what sort of size are we talking about? <laughs> well, um, uh, around about a gram. So we're talking like paperclip size. We're talking. Well, well and, they, and they, they are. I told you they were. Yeah, but small. hang, hang on. And they've got technology within them to be able to transmit back images and sounds and reflections of distant galaxies, universes, or whatever. Yeah, so um, basically what they've got in mind is going to be a, a very thin wafer with like a, a sail. So it's going to be like a little sail. They mm. haven't actually released any images of what they're actually going to look like. I mean, there is some development into solar sails. So these things have been tried out in space before, but mm. on a bigger scale. And they've actually used the sun's rays as, um, as an energy to push them around the solar system. Yeah. But these are on a different scale. These are tiny, tiny things. So they want to send lots of them into space, fire them off, a few them won't make it but it doesn't matter because there's a lot of others in the swarm that will make it mm. but they are tiny but you have to this is the thing it's going to be a, a new leap in technology because we don't have this technology right now it yeah. just isn't possible it's not feasible we can't attach a an iphone to us to a sail and send it into interstellar space mm -hmm. we just don't have the technology but is it but is it but, in order to help us kind of understand it because mm. i think it is a massive thing to, to to try and figure out precisely what you're describing is it almost like um the, the a sim card it's like something the size of a sim card in a phone yeah. which which has got yeah. quite a lot of you know information on it despite the fact that it's very very small it's, it's that kind of thing isn't it Pretty much. It's going to be an a new era of miniaturization. So I suppose it would be like trying to describe the personal computer to somebody in the 1960s. Mm. That, is, that was impossible back then. Mm. You know, what we have right now, I'm looking at my iPhone right now, th this is magic. You know, ju just a few decades ago, this is complete magic. So we're talking about in the next couple of decades, things are going to get much smaller, much more miniaturized. These things will suddenly become possible. We're going to have sensors that are extremely small. Perhaps we'll have camera optics that are going to be that minuscule that yeah. we can attach them all to these tiny craft and send them into interstellar space. I mean, I'm skeptical. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for space science and all these kind of things. And I've worked mm. very close with other interstellar groups because there are physicists out out there and engineers working on these really big problems for mankind how to get to other stars yeah. in the far future assuming certain technologies but this is like a very big leap for even my imagination it's like okay in the next couple of decades or so they haven't really put too much of a time limit on it mm. we're actually going to send these tiny 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 probes and they're going to send them really fast. I mean, these things are going to have... Yeah, well, you see, this is what interests me most about this uh, whole thing, Doc, and that is that they're going to try and make them fly at 25% of uh, the speed of light. Now, that is so yeah. incredibly fast that uh, the mind boggles. But what most interests me is if we can start sending craft at 25% of the speed of light, it's not going to be long before we should be able to send craft at the speed of light. And once you start sending craft through space at the speed of light, you become a time traveller, don't you? Oh, who knows? Who knows? But well, I thought you did. Not unless you're on it. Not unless you're on it. Unless you, you know, miniaturise yourself like, honey, I shrunk the... Uh, no, no, uh, no, the you don't understand there. me. If, if if we go through the technology that Dr Ian's telling us and yeah. we've got these miniature cameras, yeah. if, if these tiny miniature cameras are on a, on a tiny craft's travelling at the speed of light, then surely we should be able to get a picture of the crowning and the coronation of Henry VIII what? sent back to us. Why? Because it then becomes a time travel, doesn't it? If no. You go, if you go faster than no. the speed of light, you're a time traveller, Doc, aren't you? Hey, I'm telling you, we should co-author a book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, but what section of the bookshelf no. would it go on? No, but I'm, I've got it right, haven't I? Scientifically, no. I've got it right, no, Doc, have... haven't I? If you go... You'd now you shut mini... up, because you don't a... know anything. You'd have to have a miniature cameraman attached to it. No, you wouldn't. You uh, you wouldn't. These all work by remote. If you've got a miniature camera on a miniature spacecraft right. travelling at faster than the speed yeah. of light, it should be able to take <laughs> pictures of the Battle of Hastings in right. 1066 okay. and send them back to base. Is that not the case, Doc, in theory? Um... 
Uh, we're talking about time travel now. Um, <laughs> no, mm. I mean, this is, a, and also you touch on an important point. So yeah, if you scale it down small enough, so yep. basically the whole point of these probes is to make them as small and as light as possible. As you can probably see, why are we making one gram spacecraft? Well, it's because this laser needs to have been very efficient at sending, you know, the, the lighter the lighter the spacecraft, the faster it will go. Mm. And that's basically what they're saying. So really the, the limit of what they can see right now, and bearing in mind, we don't even have these lasers yet. I mean, the, these lasers would be like, like a 100 gigawatt laser, mm. which would be incredibly powerful. So you have to ask the question, when you fire this laser, how does it not incinerate these poor probes? So these probes have to be made of something that we don't currently have. Mm. So we need to develop new techniques, new manufacturing techniques, new materials to do this. I mean, to go any faster than 20% of speed light or 25% of speed light, I, I, I couldn't even imagine what kind of laser you'd need to do that. And even if it is even feasibly possible, you probably need more power than the planet. Can well, well, so how so far, far, so far, far out, excuse me, apart from yeah. the fact that we haven't got the material to make uh, these uh, microscopic craft, uh, and, and we, we haven't got, got the laser. We haven't got the laser to fire them, mm. uh, and we haven't really yet got the technology, technology yeah. to fire them as far as we want to fire them. It's all a bit uh, pie in the sky. It's all, it's all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready to air tomorrow, yeah. Mm. No, and, and this is the thing, and this is why I am kind of excited, well, I'm really excited anyway, just the mm. fact of seeing it's a massive investment being put into, like, basic um, interstellar physics. The be the thing in in history, I mean, humanity has always tried to reach out, out of the box. You know, we've always tried to push the envelope, mm. do big things. So, like, the space race, for one. Even just a decade before first man went to space, Yuri Gagarin, um, they would have said that was impossible, but we proved we could do it. And along the way, we produced a, a ton of technologies to make that happen. Mm. And a lot of these technologies went on to form the space race. We landed a man on the moon. Suddenly, we got you know t tiny computers that, that could do these amazing calculations, and, and it kind of changed our way of life here on Earth. Mm. And all the time, like NASA, the space Age, the European Space Agency are developing these technologies that enrich life on Earth. So even if this program, this, this Starshot program headed by Stephen Hawking doesn't achieve what it's set out to do, yeah. it's going to discover a load of things. It's going to stimulate the debate, isn't it? And everybody's going to try harder. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. 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 New technologies, new baking foil, perhaps. Yeah. These things are going to be made of. Baking um, foil. We've been using that lately. That's great. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, exactly. it is. It's new fashion. People are wearing baking foil trousers <laughs> these days, believe they it are. or not. But, yeah. but funnily enough, not very small ones. Yeah. Hey, uh, Doctor, we'll have to leave it there, but we'd love to talk to you again because yeah, thanks, uh, it is a fascinating area uh, which uh, micro... See, I told you it was micro uh, craft. It wasn't anything that you could see from a long yeah, way away, a I, way that looked small. I thought you I thought you were a bit gentle on the Doc by saying, look, Doc, this is all pie in the sky. Well, it's not his we project. We we yeah, but he's getting, fault. Yeah, but he's getting very excited about well, it. Well, so he should. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, but I get excited by the idea that one of these days mm. somebody will say, beam me up, Scotty, yeah. and I will suddenly disappear into a load of molecules yeah. and reconfigure, uh, and reconfigure. In, a, in, a, in a cocktail bar in Sydney. Hopefully in, not with a fly. In the space of about uh, 30 seconds, yeah. right? Well, hopefully. And, and I get excited about that. Mm. Yeah, but, you see, but we haven't got is, the technology to do it yeah, yet. Yeah, the trouble is you only see these, these kind of uh, technological advances as to what they can do for you. So that no. like, you could go back and watch what happened at the Battle of Hastings or you could go back and see Henry VIII. Nine. Or you could be sent to some cocktail bar halfway around the world. No, no, no. It's no, not no. about that. It's about the, the considerable learning that we could all do no. as mankind about what's out there. No, I don't. And whether it's friendly. No, I want the world to improve so that mankind is kinder to each other. Yes. Friendlier. Because you are such a friendly, outgoing person. And I do like the... Uh, I do like the... Um, See the time, by the way. I do, yeah, I do like the bit from the Superman film where when you've got really horrible villains on Earth, just yeah. put them into some sort of cosmic space and get rid of them forever. <laughs> I like that. Shoot them off into a cannon. Send them off on one of these microscopic uh, That's right. trips Definitely. to Alpha Centauri. Definitely. Uh, that was um, uh, Dr Ian O'Neill, space scientist. We'll be talking to him some more, I think, because he sounds a very interesting character. Mm. This is Talk Sport. Talk sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. Porky Vision, of course, coming up in the next hour. And the Porky Quiz tomorrow uh, on the anniversary of something or other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the American Civil War. Yeah. Uh, now, Derek and Penkoid uh, has sent you a text. The bog cleaner. Uh, that's him, yeah. Yeah. 
We are going to Cardiff, you know, so I think you might want to row back on your no, uh, insults no, of the bog no. cleaner. Uh, because yeah. Cardiff and Pencoy not a million miles away. Right. Uh, we're going there on May the 7th, by the way. May the 7th. Does Porky want to go back in time so he can see the last time Everton won a trophy? <laughs> oh, that's, oh, quite, that's quite witty, oh, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. What was that great share song? I want to... What? Go back in time or something. What's it called? Um, you if know. I could turn back time. If I could turn back time. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Did you ever see the uh, video of that? Uh, I think I did. It was yeah. on the uh, it was on the battleship mm. uh, USS New Jersey, biggest battleship yes. ever built, right? Yeah. And she was sitting on the guns and all that. I mean, it's very phallic, wasn't yeah. it? She was sitting on well, the edge well, of these. I never thought it was particularly phallic. Of, of these, I, was, of, I was just surprised that the Ministry of Defence in America gave her permission to use it. Well, the thing is, they left all the sailors on the boat as well, and yeah. I was only thinking to myself, you know, you're a USS Navy. Uh, uh, hang on, a US Navy ser- sol- service yeah. man. Right. Sailor. Sailor. And you're on your boat, and all of a sudden, the helicopter flies in, and they say, who's that? And you say, chair. And mm. she's and she's filming a video yeah. on board your ship. Right. And then it must have been quite astonishing, really. Yeah. Because she suddenly walks out in fishnet tights, and there's, mm. like, 6,000 soldiers on this mm. boat. Right. And uh, makes sailors. a video. It was about the sailors. Yeah, it's it absolutely well, amazing. Well, are you saying that they might have been... Um overcome with emotion. Well, you know, sailors at sea don't often see a woman, do they? You know, especially well, they on, do a, now, on, on a huge... Well, they do now, because they've got women on the boat as well. Yeah, but, I mean, there's not a lot of women on a, on a, on a battleship like that. Yeah. I mean, you know these, uh, these American aircraft carriers, mm. like uh, USS uh, Theodore Roosevelt, yeah. I think, is the biggest one now. Yeah. Um, I mean, last time that docked in Portsmouth it Harbour... It couldn't, could it? In Solent. It, it had to dock in. in the Solent. Yeah. It's got 6,000 crew. Yeah. I mean, 6,000 is a small town. That's right. Isn't it? Yeah. So, can you imagine? That? Where on earth do they all live and sleep and eat and well, work? I mean, these things are like massive. I mean, they're bigger than cruise ships, aren't they? They're, they're huge. I mean, they're, a cruise ship carries that many people, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I suppose really so. I suppose so. But I mean, it was amazing when I looked at it. Uh, Three thousand four hundred of the crew were from the U.S. Navy, yeah. and two thousand six hundred of the crew were from the U.S. Navy Air Force. Have you heard of me? Or the U.S. Air Force? U.S. Air Force. No, no, no. They were still Navy personnel. Right. They were like Tom Cruise in Top Gun. Yeah. You know, uh, naval aviators. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Are they not in the Air Force then? No, they're not. They're, no, they're in the U.S. Navy. Oh, okay. They are in the U.S. Navy. So they're like Navy pilots. They're naval pilot, naval aviators. Because yeah. if you look at the marks on the side of their planes, mm. it's a distinctly different yeah. marking to the U.S. Air Force. Right. And it says Navy on it, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. It does right. say Navy. That's absolutely okay. right. Because if you remember the scene on the top of the deck, you know, when the... I don't uh, remember the scene. I've only seen Top Gun uh, once, and I don't intend to watch those, it again. Those guys I on think the, it's rubbish. Those guys on the top of the deck were called... Uh, they call... Uh, what do they call them? How does... Uh, how those uh, cherries on the uh, on the deck? No, on the roof. The cherries on cherries. the roof. The cher- they? Well, but they wear red coats. Oh, so right. They flag the, sh- the planes in and out, oh, you know? Right. So they not wear, like, red boiler suits? No, 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 like high-vis vests, you oh, know, right. but of different colours. Oh. Because you've got to understand, like, there's a lot of jobs. Like, some of the guys refuel the planes. Yeah. Some of the guys line the planes up. Yeah. Some of the guys look after the spring that springs them off the platform oh. and the trap that gets them and when they come they back. they have to get them when they come back. And also they yeah. have to get the lifts operated, don't they? Because they operate the lifts them. operate. The, the wings fold up, don't well, they? Well, I tell you what is interesting as yeah. well. When they was parked in the Solent, I counted uh, 60 aircraft on the top deck. Right. And I said to some expert who was there, you know, I mean, well, I'm an expert myself. Uh, was well, it the Admiral? Well, a contact down there who right. knows a lot about these things. Mm. And I said, I said, well, if they've got 60 on the deck, I said, how many, how many have they got below? He right. said, none. I said, what do you mean? He said, the planes, when the ship is sailing, are always in the hangar below yeah. because of the effect of seawater on the planes. It erodes them. Uh-huh. I said, well, well also, you wouldn't leave them on the deck, would you? Because you're going up and down. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's right, Massive yeah. swells. So I said, well, they'll do on the deck. He said, that's purely for uh, presentational... Show. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, uh, purely for presentational reasons. Yeah. Show it off. He says, if we're, if we're, if we're going to a foreign... Well, two reasons. Firstly, presentational reasons aesthetically, so that the people of local friendly communities well, I think, will look I at think it. I think they were sticking two fingers up to the, to, the, to the UK because they know that the UK doesn't have any planes at all. Well, no, I mean, the second thing is, is that when you go to um, antagonistic areas of the world, yeah. you want to make sure that people know you've got at least 60 aircraft on board, and if they start messing around, they will employ a bit of the old, uh, you know, send a, a gunboat policy, you yes. know what I mean? Gunboat yeah. diplomacy. Yeah, gunboat diplomacy is yeah. quite right, yeah. Well, right. Hopefully, hopefully that won't right. happen. Right, OK. Yes. Now then, you're going to tell me about some... Uh, uh, you're going to read me some uh, notes that we've got I here. could, yeah. I'll, I'll just read them off in order, shall I? Well, uh, John says, sympathies to men suffering with those conditions. More research is needed. 
I'm walking, oh, uh, I presume on the, on, on on the saddle. penis yeah, scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremy says Marines are also on the carriers as well. Yes, that's true. They are. They are. But they are part of the US Navy. Yeah. Uh, and Peter says, share on a battleship, sea balls or maybe battle balls. Hey, watch it. Um, it's a family uh, show. Ian says, I'm sure Mike Perry has ridden a few bikes. Has he ever suffered from saddle balls? No, I have not, uh-huh. uh, I'm glad to say, but I have read... Uh, in fact, I got my saddle stolen, I think I told you. Yeah, why did I your saddle? I don't, well, because it was, had a flick switch. You could just put it in and flick a switch and that, that uh, tightened it into it into the tubular frame. Yeah. Somebody reached through the railings in my, uh, in my garage mm. and literally flicked it off and walked off with the saddle. It's very difficult to ride a bike without a saddle, well, believe it is, me. But you could have got another saddle. Yes. Eh? Well, I did, that's yeah. what I did, but then, I, then uh, the bike got Lee, stolen. Lee enjoyed the interview we had with uh, Dr. Uh, Neil, Dr. O'Neill. Yes. He said, this is brilliant, get him on again, time travel and porky yeah. uh, can wear that tinfoil hat. It's well, brilliant. I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Um, and Pascal says, time yeah. travel would be ideal for porky. It could actually help him achieve better results in his porky historical quizzes. Uh, you mean like go and witness it as it happens? Yeah. I mean, it is a fascinating thing, time travel, isn't it? And I suppose ever since we all sat down and watched Doctor Who the first time, we all believe that one of these days it will be possible. But you see, I'm interested in your view of time travel, mm. not because I'm saying it's right or wrong, right. but your view of time travel is that you'd like to go back in time yes. to see something happen. Yes. Why would you want to do that? Well, why do you think? Well, well, I don't know. Well, you can't see the fascination in yeah, but, standing on the beach and watching the French arrive for the, uh, the, the uh, Battle of Hastings. Well, I'm not sure, really. I mean, if, say, for example, if there was one thing you could do, either yeah. backwards or forwards, yes. you would like to go back and watch that. If I had my choice, mm. and it's not going back very far in history, yeah. but if I had my choice to go back to anything, I would want to go back and be an 18-year-old student yeah. who, instead of leaving school and going to university in 1939, yeah. left school and joined the RAF and then become a fighter pilot. I see, no, but you can't do that. Because you only go back and observe. If you go back, I mean, you've seen Back to the Future. If you go back yeah. and you start having an effect on your current situation yeah. and changing the world, mm. then all sorts of things change. Well, this is why I don't believe in time travel and it has arrived yet, because if it had, there would have been no Adolf Hitler. Well, no, that's not true, but that's, but that's a ridiculous way of looking no, no, at it. No, 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 it's, it's right. But if, from a scholarly point of view, yeah. would you not rather go forward in time to see what becomes of us? Well, I'd love to see what's become... I'd love to see what this country's going to be like in 100 years' time. Yeah. That's a great fascination. Yeah. But, in fact, I've now accepted that it's not going to change that much between now and me dying. I, it'll change some, but, I mean, not well, much. Well, it depends but, how soon you die. Well, it depends how soon I die, I suppose. But I'd love to go back 100 years. But, no, why hasn't somebody gone back and, you know, in, in, shot Hitler? Some guy had a, an opportunity... <laughs> no, no, it's true. Well, it, because... You it, I mean... In the Beer Hall Putsch, right, which was in 1933... Yeah. But you could go Some all the way back and have gone back with Genghis a gun. Khan. Eh? You could have done the Genghis Khan. Yeah, in fact, I, why would you not get? Why, if, why, would, why would you yeah. go back to shoot a guy who, when you could go back and shoot his parents? You know, I mean, the thing. No, has, no, 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 no. What I'm saying, yeah, I suppose you could, you could have shot Hitler's parents. You could have found them, but you knew where Hitler was. He was in that beer hall putsch in well, 1933. I mean, going me, and do him. Trust me, if you know how to get back in time yeah. to find a beer keller, mm. uh, you can go back in time to find his parents. Sure. Yeah, m- maybe Genghis Khan. I wouldn't go back and shoot him. I like Genghis Khan because his, his rich history of. Of mutilation, murder, and 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 you know, devilment is uh, is almost like fiction now. I don't care about all them people, yeah. all the Mongolian people who got massacred oh, so by you, Genghis Khan. Of, it's a question of how far away. Well, no, the the what I'm saying is that the Adolf Hitler situation touches millions of people's lives yeah. to this very day. Yeah. So go back and get rid of him, and then we'd all have a happier life. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't I don't buy that at all. But anyway, uh, here's one from uh, Stumpy who says, uh, if you were in that uh, Star Trek scenario, he would say to Porky. Beam me up stocky, which is quite good. This is from Ian. He yeah. says, my stepson fancies Cher in that video you were talking about yeah. when he was 13, but then his mum told him she was the same age as his gran. Yes. He went off her rapidly. Really? Yeah. Well, I would have thought you would be more inclined to be more fond of her then, because you say, uh, well, it'd be amazing how, yeah. how, how good she looks, considering that, that's her age. Yeah, but when you say the same age as your gran, you know, well, you, you know, it turns you off a bit, doesn't Does it? it? Well, I think so. Now, yeah. here's a very philosophical point from Joe in Greenock. OK. Uh, who says, and I don't know if Joe is a man or a woman, picture the scene. You take a girl on a date, wine and dine her, take yes. her to the cinema perhaps, yes. and then maybe you've spent maybe 100 quid and you then get your oats at the end of the night, oh, as he puts it. Oh, excuse so me. So he's saying, so there must be prostitutes in Cheltenham. They're just disguising themselves as wives and girlfriends. I'm sorry, I'm not one of those that adheres to that philosophy. No. That no. just, you know, that you could either uh, you know, buy sex or you can take somebody out for dinner and it's not any different. I don't agree with that. You don't agree with what? 
Why aren't you listening to me? I am listening. Well, his his theory basically is saying that you know there's not much difference between somebody going out and paying a hundred quid to have yeah. sex with a prostitute, yes. or taking somebody out, spending a hundred quid, mm. and then taking them home. I don't think that's the same thing at all. No, I don't. I think the taking them out for dinner and then, you know, following the night up with a bit of um, physical activity is quite romantic, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Physical activity. Yeah, but I mean... Is that what pay, you say? Well, Perhaps coming back to my place with a bit of physical yeah, activity. But paying a woman £100 basically well, for... No comparison, is there? ..for half an hour rogerising yeah. energetically <laughs> is not, you know, in my view, <laughs> romantic at all. No. If you see what I mean. Uh, here's one from uh, Cripps, yeah. who says, Comrade Porksky is obviously brimming with pride with this week's celebrations of Yuri Gagarin and the USSR cosmology programme. Well, yeah, I... I it, in a way, in a way, I, I do feel that they've got their act sort of together. Yeah, well, I'm sure you do. Ian says, the next thing Porky will be Ooh. buying a DeLorean and a flux capacitor. What? A DeLorean and a flux capacitor. Oh, yes, yes. That's back, back to, to the, the future. future, indeed. Match day live on Talk Sport. What a fantastic strike! Join Adrian Durham and get all the goals as they go in with live commentary of Chelsea versus Manchester City. Kevin De Bruyne has won the day for Manchester City! Day live Saturday from one on Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mice. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course, and uh, lots, lots more for us to get to uh, discussing. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that you want to talk about tomorrow, well, the Porky Quiz tomorrow night, yes. uh, on the American Civil War. Yes. Have you ever been to any of those old Civil War battlegrounds? Indeed, I have. Have you? Yes. Do you know my ex-wife used to go to them and say that she could hear voices. Really? Yeah. Mm. She used to get quite freaked out by it. She used to say that. Uh, well, I think they're she very. Could, she uh, could sense the spirit of the dead. They're very emotional, very stirring. Yeah. I went down in the deep south and followed one of the um, Civil War battle trails, and we started in Charleston. Yeah. In uh, is that North Carolina or I south? Think, I think it's south. Isn't south it? Carolina, yeah. Charleston, South Carolina. It's, a, it's, a, it's in Gone with the Wind, isn't it? Gone with the Wind. Mm. We went down to went all the way across uh, to Atlanta, uh, Georgia. But we went via fantastic places like Lookout Mountain, yeah. where that famous uh, tennis player came from. I've forgotten his name now. What's his Roscoe name? Roscoe Tanner. Roscoe Tanner. I don't he know why I thought came, of Roscoe yeah, Tanner. You did immediately. He came from Isn't Lookout Mountain. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's where he went. He was one of the first ever kind of heavy hitting. Oh, servers, he was the biggest he? server in the game. Yeah. He was. And he, nowadays, he was guy, you would think he's probably yeah, nothing. He was the guy who invented the uh, you know the dynamic serve and all that. Yeah. And my, the highlight of that uh, that trip I went on, and I just paid for it myself because I wanted to go and see the you know the battlefields and uh-huh. that kind of stuff. Was, um, Unusual for you. To was, pay yeah, for yeah, was staying at the um, Chattanooga Choo Choo Hilton. Oh yeah, where a lady at the door, as we got off the bus and walked in, started singing, <laughs> "Pardon me, Al, is this a Chattanooga Choo Choo?" What a terrible job that is. Yeah, but she, she did it to every, it all the time. every group of guests that arrived, yeah. and uh, we stayed in a railway carriage. Mm. You know, like a converted railway right. carriage, which was part of the hotel. All oh, right. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, anyway, listen, I've got some good news for you. Have you? Because you have made an oath of your yourself tonight How? in well in your well, outbur- so. your outburst about winners and losers. No, I don't think so. And you've badly upset um a lot of the millions I don't agree. Of listeners. Well would you like an update on the voting? And, and and hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll have that in a second. Right. And of course you tried to upset me, I but I not. but I rose above it. Yeah. I have found for you on my information device the six steps to take if you want to say sorry to me properly. What? You, why should I say sorry to you? Well, you, and it's not to me, it's to our millions of listeners. Because I don't, I don't you believe really I have, have upset reason. the apple cart. I don't have any reason They've to They've accused apologize. you of being babyish and childlike, throwing your toys no, out the pram. Yeah, well, they're wrong about that. Anyway, the six stages of the apology go like this, OK? Go on. First of all, you have to acknowledge your responsibility. Will you offer, uh, acknowledge your responsibility? For what? Well, for causing this, you know, rather no, unsavoury row, no, which led row. to the cancelling of winners and losers. I haven't caused a row. So you, I, merely, so you, I merely stated some facts so and you so, then threw, threw your toys so, out of the So plan. you won't acknowledge your responsibility? Well, it's not a very clear question. It, 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 uh, it's yes or no. Will you acknowledge your responsibility? About what, though? For ending the winners and losers. No, I will not. Right. Second point, uh, this is uh, uh, the six points, the six stages of the perfect apology. Okay. So, so you've refused to get through the first one. The second one is, will you offer amends? Amends for what? Amends for... Well, we're already doing that because it would appear that the vote is going so, so that we reinstate winners and losers next week. But that was my suggestion. That wasn't well, yours. I'm very happy. I don't care whose suggestion it was. It's my suggestion. So, so you're happy to offer amends? Well, I, if that is an amend, then yes, I am. So that's a partial. That's a partial. So that's not even a fully acknowledged... Well, uh, I don't think I'm going to apologise right. for. Stage three. Stage, Stage three, three yeah. in the perfect apology. It's yeah. three out of six, OK? Uh-huh. Will you now please express your regret? No. What? I don't, I don't regret anything. So you don't regret that no. the situation blew up in your face? No, I don't regret and, anything. And that you ended up winners and losers being cancelled? Rianne. 
Oh, so learned. you won't regret so, so you won't express any regret? No. Right. OK. For, stage four, yeah. will you please explain just what went wrong? Uh, well, what went wrong, as far as I'm understanding it, uh, is that the rules suggest that if you are going to have winners and losers, uh, three of each, you have mm. to have all of those three mm. in both categories currently um, it's something which is actually the case, right? Right. And since one of them was not the case, the question was raised by the independent vigilators that mm. this is no longer valid. Mm. And when I started trying to explain that to you, you suddenly threw your toys out of the and said, oh, I don't want to play anymore. No, I didn't. That's what happened. No, I didn't. I, I said, oh, no, it was valid at the time that we asked the yeah, but audience while the voting, to vote. But while the voting was going on, on, it ceased to be valid. Well, so I can't have a responsibility for that. Well, what you didn't let me do was finish my point, which was to say, I don't think... I would have said to you, yeah. I don't think that actually matters. No, it doesn't matter. And I would have been quite happy for you to win this particular round and move on to the next game next week. No, no. You see, but I didn't get to that point so you're, because so you were too busy jumping So you're jumping being untruthful over because you'd no. already put out tweets saying the composition is possibly void. It I didn't never say that. possibly void. No, I yes, didn't you say did. that. You no. did. In terms, anyway, no. we move on to the next point. OK. This is point five out point of six. Point five, right. And point five is... Yeah. Would you please declare your repentance? <laughs> what did you have you turned into like you know the no. bishop, bishop of, no. uh, of the cardinal Richelieu? No, no, no. These the are the, I have found this in a in a document, yeah. and these are the six stages of being able. Even the Catholic Church doesn't to ask you to say sorry this much, right? Will yeah. you declare your repentance? No, you won't. No, because I don't think I've done anything wrong. And here's the sixth and final point. Okay. To complete the apology. Yeah. You Make must... a small cash donation to a nearby church. No, you must now ask me for forgiveness. <laughs> What's your problem? Well, I'm not going to do that either. You, so what? you're not prepared to do that either? No. So, so basically, of the six steps to yeah. the apology which mm. you owe to our millions of listeners, yeah. you have only uh, accepted point four to explain what went wrong and right. then you explained that as your version of events, right. which was inaccurate and untruthful. Uh, no. So, no, in fact, I don't, I don't you have no that. intention of apologising no. whatsoever. All right, let's go around the other way. Why don't you go through those six stages, right, mm. and mm. explain to me uh, and apologise to me mm. uh, for making me lose a million dollars by moving out of my apartment after promising to stay there for a year. What's that, what's that going to do with the price of fish? Well, it's the same scenario. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's not the same scenario that actually, That actually did me proper harm. No, no, it didn't. Yeah, it did. No, it's, if, no, I was it's not... a, if I was in a court of law, I could say, well, you can prove yeah. that there was yeah. proper harm done mm. because I'm now a million dollars worse off than no, I would have been that's rubbish. if you'd stayed there for the year that you promised to. No, it's rubbish. The fact that you were the world's worst property investor I've mm. ever come across has nothing to do with me, pal. Oh, OK. You just so the fact my... that you promised to stay there for a it... year no, I didn't. Uh, and then left after a month. No, I didn't. I never did that. No, you did. No, I can't, I can't help the fact that somebody at the Daily Express signed some kind of a document with you. I didn't even know where I was going to live when I went to New York, right. so it's nothing to do with you me did. at all. You were going to live in my apartment. No. Nothing to do with me at all, oh, believe okay. me. All right. Uh, now, um, what I need to talk to you about, what I need to talk to you about is this. Go on. Um, did you know, did you know that um, during all those tsunamis that we suffered a few years ago, unfortunately, mm. unfortunately... Well, we didn't really suffer any, did we? Well, no, we, we saw them suffer around the world. Yeah. Do you know what? Not one single animal was killed because animals... That's not true. No, no, no it's, it is true. Animals can sense a tsunami mm. or an earthquake... They can. ..at least 12 hours ahead of a human being. That's true. But, you... many, but I remember seeing pictures, particularly in Sri Lanka, of, uh, of animals that were, like, up in trees and that had been killed and washed away and all the rest of it. No, it's not. It's not. Don't worry. Uh, very few animals have ever been washed up in the deluge uh, following a tsunami. Particularly note the fact in Sri Lanka's National Wildlife Park at yeah. Yala, uh -huh. Y-A-L-A, which houses elephants, buffalo, monkeys and wild cats... No animal corpses were ever found. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they weren't actually killed, does it? Yeah, rather than having an extra sense, because they found out, you know, trying to find out why the animals, you know, got away, yeah. rather than having an extra sense, because the feeling is that animals have a sixth sense, yeah. OK? Uh, well, it's like when earthquakes come, don't they? They kind yeah. of know that there's going to be something happening. Yeah, animals simply have sensory abilities quite different from our own. For example... Uh, they may have heard the earthquake which caused the tsunami before the tsunami hit land. Yes. The human ear may perceive sound in the frequency band of 20 to 20,000 cycles per second, mm. which is called hertz, HZ. Yeah. But the underwater rupture may have generated different sound waves known as infrasound frequencies, which go below 20 hertz, uh -huh. which the human ear can't hear. Uh, hear, uh, hear. Mm. These low-frequency sounds can be created by hugely energetic events such as meteor strikes, volcanic eruptions, avalanches and earthquakes, and infrasound detection devices have been proposed as a warning system to stop human beings getting trapped 
in future tsunamis. How do you think about that? Well, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but I think it's probably wrong to say that animals weren't killed at all. I mean, no. certainly some of them can get away. No, listen to this. And it's very, very weird. I'll tell you, when I was in San Francisco after the earthquake, right. there's a very odd kind of atmosphere which you can't mm. quite put your finger on. You know, it's very, the air is very still. Mm. You know, there's very few birds making any sound at yeah, all. You don't really right, see yeah. any birds flying. And it's almost like there's a sort of... It's almost like the the barometric pressure is somehow different. The end of the world. Well, it feels like that. It, it feels like the very end of the weird. World. And you, when I was walking around, you'd see all these kind of, yeah. you know, big piles of lava literally coming out of the ground. Yeah, not good. Very weird. Not good. Strange. Yeah, our last one here. Many animals can detect infrasound, including dogs, hippos, tigers and various birds. Elephants and giraffes use infrasound to communicate between herds over long distances, up to 40 miles away. Yeah. How about that? I'm not surprised. Yeah. Now, I've got a lot of uh, time-travelling type tweets here, okay. but I'll read those out to you very, very shortly. OK. We're getting quite close on Porky Vision as well. Porky Vision? Have you got a big uh, prepared uh, sort of uh, selection well, for us? Well, I haven't had a lot of time to watch a lot of stuff this week. Oh, what, well, you're going to claim it because you were in hospital, you couldn't watch TV? Well, I have been in hospital. I have been in hospital. Well, I know we've seen the pictures and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. wrong with you, though. So well, you, you know, you, watching, you, you know... They you, don't let you watch TV in you, hospital. You, no, they don't. You, you've been claiming for years there's nothing wrong with me. No, there isn't. Until you saw the pictures of my devastated shell of a man... <laughs> uh, uh, attached to heart monitor machines well, being put through his faces. I don't even know that was you. Your face yeah. is covered up. Well, it was me. You know? It was me. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up. Uh, it's very, very close on Porky Vision time. Uh, a couple of uh, tweets to read out. VHP okay. says, guys, you made my day with the tackle shrinking and shriveled prunes discussion. Well, Keep it up. It's a family show. Well, yes, it is. It uh, is. Here's yeah. one from Andy. He says, lads, by travelling at light speed, you can only travel into the future by spending, say, one year. Uh, you would turn up 20 years later. I think he means in the future you'd have to spend a year and then come back. You can oh, just go there and why? come straight back. Well, I think the only way that you can sort of catch up on time or something yeah. is to spend more time somewhere else. Very interesting. If you know what I mean. Yes, uh, yes, and uh, here's yes. one from uh, Becky mm. again who says, I'd be disappointed yep. after a night of whining and dining mm. if I ended up playing Scrabble as a form of physical activity. Well, I totally agree. I mean, that's not what I meant. You know, it's an adult thing and, uh, and adults have to uh, decide... What they want to do? Helder says this: two men that grew in the media world and yet so naive and lacking self, though. I don't know what that means. Is that us? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, what, what do we lack? I think he or she. I think. I think they mean maybe lacking self thought or self awareness. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay. I'm not right. even sure if Helder's right. a. Um, a first name or a, or a last name, or okay. a man's name or a woman's name. OK. Now, listen, in the past, you've chided me for saying, um, you know, I tell fat people they're fat and that should help them. You think that's cruel? Well, I don't think it's helpful. You don't think it's helpful? No. Right. Well, well Lots you... of people have been very upset by your uh, constant deriding of fat people. Well, I'm, I, I don't deride. I, I tell them they're overweight mm. in order to try and stimulate them to do something about it. Yeah. Now, believe it or not, I've now been backed up by another expert, an Oxford University scientist, a professor of diet and population health, uh -huh. has said that the perception that the overweight ought to be able to help themselves is preventing them from getting the support they need. Oh, yeah. So they're on my side. Now, um, well, yeah, but they go backwards and forwards on this, don't they? Because last week there was not some uh, expert saying actually all of this, you know, fat shaming yeah. is actually a bad thing. It doesn't help well, anyone. The person who said it was a bad thing was mm. Susan Jebb, yes. the government's former diet czar. That's right. She said obesity is mainly caused by a person's genes and the prevalence of junk food. Yeah. Okay. Right. However, the Oxford University, uh, University scientist I'm talking about, who is Dr. Steve Miller, yeah. right? He says, as in the Steve Miller band. As in Steve... Yeah, well, no, that was an A-R at the end. This is M-I-L-L-E-R, uh -huh. right? He said, telling people their size isn't their fault could mean they don't try to improve their health. Right. Now, Mr Miller goes on to say, we have to take responsibility. If people are told it's not their fault, they are fat, you're giving them a free admission to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. I'm not saying this to be cruel, but people have to take ownership. Uh -huh. They have to wake up and be aware of themselves. Right. Uh, and Will Quint, a Tory MP and outspoken critic of the planned sugar tax, said, as someone who used to weigh over 20 stone, I know the first step is to recognise you have a problem and that you can personally do something about it. Personal attitude is important or you will fail. Well, okay, yeah, you got that. I mean, I've said to you many times as well that I'm getting a bit fed up with people describing how other people should live their lives and telling people what they should do about themselves. And I think yeah. there's far too much nannying going on and far too much instruction and kind of nosy, nosy, nosy um, Parker type behaviour going on. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If people, if people want to do whatever they do as long as it's legal. They should be allowed to. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. I also got a reference here from a guy called Duff Bruce. 
Strange name. Duff but he's, Bruce. Yeah, but he's a, a so bariatric... Bruce Duff. No, it's Duff Bruce. Uh-huh. And he's a bariatric surgeon and uh-huh. fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons right. in Edinburgh. Right. That's why his name is Duff Bruce. Uh-huh. I suppose MacDuff still exists up there, doesn't Mac it? The Duff, name? it does yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Bruce yeah. MacDuff would Bruce be a good MacDuff. name. So uh, what he says is people can make changes to their diet and lifestyle to counter that. These could be as simple as taking time over our meals and avoiding TV dinners. Now, we have had the conversation before, so I don't want to go over old ground, but if ambulances are having to be built bigger with bigger suspensions, yeah. if mortuaries are having to to buy bigger slabs to put dead patients on. Uh And if firemen now spend one-third of their time hauling overweight people out of blocks of flats, then something's gone terribly wrong and somebody's got to do something about it. Now, Dr Nicholas Banner gave me a lecture the other day when I was in the hospital and said to me, you know, don't put weight on when I sit before now and I see you again. I'm probably going to see him again next year. Next year. He said, if you do, he said that becomes a constant pattern of you putting weight on to get older. Can you arrange to see him next year on a night that you're not supposed to be working? Uh, well, is that not possible? He's got a very tight schedule. Well, so have you. Well, that's true, but his job is more important than my job. Well, you might because think that. He sells. He saves people's lives. He regulates people's hearts. I mean, the man is a, a life giver, a miracle worker. I would say. Would you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, in many ways. Well, that may well be the case. I'd still like to get him on the show, and I don't have anything. It has nothing to do with the patient confidentiality. Well, he does. He, you know, he no. signed the Hippocratic Oath and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Oath you know what I mean? About not doing any harm. It's nothing to do with the. the well, the, 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 and it's also if it's talking about you, yeah. you can give him permission to do that. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, yes and no, but I mean, I don't wish to. You know, he, they, they do, a lot of their work is in in very very confidential terms. Honestly, it really is. No right. 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 Now, here's a story that will okay. warm the cockles of your heart, okay, knowing good, as I do about uh, your fandom of uh, Maria Sharapova, yes. uh, who you defended to the She hilt. might be coming back, eh? Uh, well, apparently, yeah. uh, this Meldonium thing Meldonium. Uh, is still rattling around. You know that's what she was accused of taking? Uh, yes, you indeed. Remember, yes, you remember yeah. the, the, now, the substance that she are, was accused of taking? Aren't they saying that the deposit of meldonium in your system can be lurking there for up to three years? Well, what they're saying And therefore is, she might have taken it pre it being banned, so yes. to speak. What they're saying is they don't actually know yeah. exactly how long it can stay in the system. Yes. So uh, WADA, you know, yes. the World Anti-Doping yes, Organization, yes, yes. Right, considers there may be grounds for no fault or negligence on the part of the athlete. Now, yep. they're not saying specifically this is to do with Sharapova, yeah. but they're saying that the 172 positive tests that they've yes. had for meldonium over the past sort of recent mm-hmm. period mm-hmm. Uh, may all have to be kind of uh, reassessed. OK, well, I'm looking at a report here, which I've pulled up my information machine, written by Martin Ziegler, uh-huh. who is the chief sports reporter of The Times, yes. of Thunder. Formerly of PA. Formerly used to employ him. Yeah, formerly of PA, and one of the world's acknowledged experts on the reporting of drug in sport issues, OK? Yeah. He says, Maria Sharapova's lawyer believes that the doping case against the former Wimbledon champion has been under, p- undermined by uncertainty over how long the banned drug meldonium stays in the body in a dramatic development yeah. that could lead to numerous doping cases being thrown out. The World Anti-Doping Agency, known as WADA... I've just said all that. ...admitted there's a lack of scientific yeah. evidence. Well, how can they get it so wrong, would well, be my question. Before they actually ban somebody, I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, how can they, how can they think, which is what they did think, yes. that the, the, the meldonium originally would be cleared from the body in a week or two yes. at maximum, yes. and now they're saying it could stay in the body for maybe months and possibly years? Well, yeah, I know, yeah. But yeah. how can they be so wrong? Well, I don't Can you know. not explain that? I don't know. Have you ever heard of a guy called Sir Arnold Wesker? Sir Arnold Wesker? No. Or, or Arnold Wesker, as he was? No. He was a playwright. Well, I think if I'd known Sir Arnold Wesker, yeah. I might have known that he was also at one point Arnold Wesker. He was a playwright, was right? He? Yeah. What sort of playwright? Well, I don't know, but I do remember studying some of his plays at school, Arnold Wesker plays. Really? And all I can say is that uh, he's dead. <laughs> No, no, well, no, I just thought I'd let you know. Well, I mean, since I don't know who he is, no. let me see if I can find anything out about him. No, he's a, he's, a very, he's a very famous playwright. Says Arnold Wesker Batman. Uh, no, the mean. radical bard. Died aged 83. All right, that's him, yeah. Yeah, that's a guy. Mm, OK. And uh, I have to say, I have to say that... Uh, one I of do his re- most successful plays was Chips with Everything. Chips with Everything. I, I think that was the one. I think uh, that's the one I studied. Play, Chicken Soup with Barley. Chicken Soup with Barley. I think that was the one I studied. Uh-huh. I think it was, yeah, really? honestly. Yeah, yeah. Was well, he only right about food? No, but, I mean, he was very northern, so yeah. I think the reference to chips and all that was, uh, you know, to remind people, remind people, that uh, the north of England has a particularly uh, rich and relevant yeah. culture, you know what I mean? It says he was, uh, a, a, he, he was one of the writers of the 50s who became known as Angry Young Men. 
Including, which, oh, that's including right. People like Kingsley Amos, John Brain, and Alan yep. Sillito. Yep, all that's I've true. I've heard of them. All that's all that is absolutely Apparently, true. Apparently, Jeremy Corbyn paid tribute to him in the House of Commons. Oh, did he? Yeah. What when he? Oh, he must be sort of a left-wing revolutionary type well, guy. I'm saying then. he was one of those wonderful, angry young men of the fifties. Really? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's Richie Blackmore? Richie Blackmore was a guitarist. Okay. He's not dead, is he? No, he's not dead, but he's 71. Right. Uh, because I just, on my information machine, <laughs> got... He's just the... reading out people's no, birthdays. No, no, right? no, just got the register of uh, of the old... Richie uh... Blackmore, as you might remember, when yeah. we had the conversation the other day about yes. Eric Clapton. Yes. Uh, somebody tweeted in, and I'm not sure that it was true, uh, yes. but tweeted in that Richie Blackmore once said of Eric Clapton that he didn't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> Richie right, Blackmore yeah. was formerly in Deep Purple, who you might have heard of. Uh, hang on, Deep, Deep Purple? Purple? Yeah. Deep Purple, that wasn't uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, no, was it? No, that was Black Sabbath. That was Black Sabbath. But you're Deep, not a million miles away. Deep Purple was... Who sang... Had to finish with my woman Cos she couldn't read my mind. Was that Deep Purple? No idea. No. no. <laughs> what do you no. mean, no idea? That no was a idea. classic rock song from the 70s. No, don't know. Had to finish well, Deep Purple's my most famous song can... was probably Smoke on the Water. Smoke on the Water. And you know who was the one? lead singer? Uh, it was Ian Gillen, I think. Ian Gillen. He used to wear um, loons. Weren't loons? The, the popular trousers loons. in those yeah, days. Yeah, they were, yeah. The loons. big flared trousers. Loons. There you go, yeah. With no, so, with no pockets. Yeah. You know, know what Smoke on the Water was about, don't you? Smoke on the Water yeah. sounds like it was about a drug. No, no, it was about... They went down to Montreux to record an album. Oh, yeah. Uh, down in uh, the south of France, and oh, the studio yes. went on fire. The studio went and on so fire, they were, yeah. I mean, nobody knows how or why. Oh, well, they probably, set fire to it with a ganja fag. They probably, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so they sent... Like, and all smoke yeah. was going all over the lake, right? And that's how <laughs> yeah. they wrote the, uh, so they wrote the song. Well, they're probably off their heads on something, or... Oh, you know, I went to see, this actually, is mystic. <laughs> I went to see Richie Blackmore's Rainbow when I was in my formative years at because uh, he formed another band called Rainbow. Oh, Richie Rainbow. Rainbow. I saw them at Rainbow. Macedonia. It was one of my first ever dates. Hey? It was my first ever dates. I, oh. took, I took an old, a girl who was two years older than me. Yeah, how old were you? Uh, I was 16. And she was 18. Oh, really? That's quite beautiful. a leap, that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I thought I was very cool because she wanted to come to this concert with me. Yeah. And what happens afterwards? Uh, we went for some physical activity. Did you? Yeah. Successfully? Yeah. Wow, that's mm. quite an admission then, isn't it, mm. eh? Yeah. Oh, dear me. So you've been on a Rogerisation trail since the age of 16? Pretty much. Is that your first encounter? No. Oh, no. so you've been on the Roger Rogerisation trail since pre-16? No, round about then. Round about, round then. about then. I don't wish to give My away every single secret. My God, there were some really vulnerable women knocking around in North London in those days, why weren't there not? Why are you telling her a Geordie? No, I haven't telling her a Geordie. coming up, uh, it's time for Porky Vision. This is Talk Sport. Right. If you fancy a flutter on the football, a gamble on the golf, a double on the darts, or a treble on the tennis, you're in luck. Get closer to the action every weekend with Betway's Man in the Know on the Weekend Sports Breakfast with Georgie Bingham and Mickey Quinn. Bringing you all the form on the football, the going at Goodwood, the tries at Twickenham and the overs at the Oval. Every Saturday and Sunday morning from 7 on TalkSport with Betway. Bet the responsible way. Gunk and corrosion can build up in your engine. Help to protect your engine against gunk and corrosion with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. Your engine deserves our best performance fuel. Try Shell V-Power Nitro Plus today. Actual benefits may vary. See shell.co.uk slash vpower. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast on Talk Sport with the new Ford Ranger. It's the breakfast show that's always ready to take on any challenge. Join me, Alan Brazil, and a different co-host every weekday morning from 6am as we tackle all the big, big stories of the day. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast. Weekday mornings from 6 on Talk Sport with the new Ford Ranger. Ruthlessly tested across the harshest terrain on earth. Find out more at ford.co.uk. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. As your TV reviewer, I can reveal yeah. that there are no plans for a new series. Yeah, no, but wasn't there a previous series? Oh, hang on, wait a minute. It says here there might be a new series. <laughs> What's the problem? I'm 
excited to say that it's that time of the week where we look at all the big TV shows of the uh, week and yes. maybe of the year and yes. maybe of the decade, maybe several other decades. Yeah. I appreciate that, as you said, you might not have been quite so free uh, in the past few days because we went to Manchester well, on Saturday. Yes, that's which right. Involved yeah, quite a bit yeah, of travelling yeah. and then uh, you were, yeah. of course, in for your, uh, your MOT on Monday. Well, so um, I don't know whether you've had time to watch anything well, I at all. I haven't really had a lot of time to mm. watch a lot of things. Right. OK. Um, however, however... There was a new, I'm delighted to say, my favourite programme, Scott mm. and Bailey. Oh, yeah. Uh, started again last night, mm. OK? OK. Uh, s- starring the beautiful um, Suran. Suran Jones. Uh, Suran Jones, that's yes. her name. And Is she still in something else at the moment as well? No, I don't think so. Right. But there were some fantastic pictures of her in a tabloid newspaper yesterday. Really? On page three. Oh, I didn't see the, those. There are no naked um, ladies on page three in any newspaper now right. except the Daily Star. Yeah. And she looked marvellously glamorous and all that kind well, of stuff. Was she in sort of lingerie, you mean? Uh, well, I think she's like a bikini top or something, you know what uh-huh. I mean? But she's a buxom lady, you know, she's a buxom woman, ever since the days of coronation. <laughs> Sorry, what's your problem? What, what's Sorry, that? I just took a sip of water at the wrong time. Uh, really? <laughs> what? Well, do you think it's funny to talk oh, about no, ladies? Just the expression on bon bon bon. Ladies, what? Em bon em pon. Em bon em pon. Em bon pon. It's just the look on your face which accompanied the word buxom. Yes. Well. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Point of the story yes. is. Point of the story is. Um, so. Oh yeah, she's well, well. We're all hoping she's going to be a new um, series of Doctor Foster. Oh yeah. Which of course was a terrific drama. But anyway. Yeah, I've never seen that. Oh, it's, it's really good. Yeah. So, so uh, Scott and Bailey starts last night, OK? Yeah. Um, and she is... She is a... They're both cops, of course, her yeah. and her mate. Right. What's her mate? Her mate is called... Well, she's Scott or Bailey, right? Um, Suran is Bailey. OK. And the other one is Scott, played by Leslie Sharp. Now, um, let me see. Suran, i.e., uh, Bailey, that is. What is your problem? What is your problem? I don't know. Right. Okay. She gets promoted to acting DI, Detective DI, Inspector. DI Bailey. DI Bailey. Right. So or is it Scott. Hey. Or is it Scott? No, no, no. Scott's the other one. Ah. So she starts throwing her weight around a bit because she's actually, you know, a pretty good cop and all this kind of stuff. They do have to call themselves that as well, don't they? If they are actually acting DI, they, yes. they have to introduce themselves as, hello, I'm acting DI so and so. Oh, yeah, when they, knock on the, matters. when they knock on the door and flash their warrant card, yeah. you know, I am acting. No, they have to for. But as if that matters. I mean, don't you yes. think if you did that, people would be less likely to, to, to think well of them? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Anyway, so what happens? Here? Let me see what happens here. Um, oh, it's only a three-part series, by the way. And really? Yeah, it's short. It is a bit short. Uh, now, what happens? I'm just trying to uh, recollect from my notes here. Yeah. Um, she's good friends with Scott. Scott and Bailey are good mates. And oh, look, there's Kobe Bryant's farewell. Look. Who? Kobe Bryant's farewell. Oh, old Cubby. Cubby, yeah. All oh, right, kids. Now then, will you concentrate, please? Yes. So. Uh... No. I think I should tell you more about that tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. Why? Porky Vision's not on tomorrow night. Well, I haven't had a chance to fully... So it's a three-part series. Yes. Right. But and I haven't had a chance to fully analyse the first episode. Many... So this is the first episode of three. First episode of three. So I think we might... It's a very short series, that. Now, there's something else I have seen, by the way. Yeah, go on. And it stars... Uh, who's it star? <laughs> Anna... F... What's your problem? Anna Friel. Anna Friel. Now, Anna, I like Friel, Anna Friel. Anna Friel used to be in EastEnders. Did she? I think she. No. It could have been Brookside. I think it was Brookside. Now, well, she. She's not famous for the lesbian kiss. The first ever lesbian kiss on yeah. TV yeah. was Anna so Friel. This is what happens when you have a tabloid knowledge of soaps. Exactly. That's exactly. the only story I remember from Brookside. Uh, exactly, in Brookside. Yeah. Now, and she. Then she went and became a very successful actress in America. Very successful in something. What was it? Uh, well, she was, a star, she was on stage quite a bit. On stage, mm. okay, yeah. So on Broadway? Uh, I think she was on Broadway. OK, yeah. Broadway. Anyway, so she's in this, and it is called Mary Ella. Mary Ella? No, As in Frostrup. No, hang on. It's called... Uh, no, it's, it's a Mariella. dark... Mary Ella? It, it, no, it's... Uh, it, um, what's it called? Maruan. Is it Marily? No, Marily? I know it is. It's Marcella. Marcella. Mar- Marcella? Yeah, Marcella. Oh, as in Marcello? No, M-A-R-C-E. 
double L A. Okay. Just looked it up on Mark my Scheller. information device actually. All right. Uh, Marcella. Okay. Now this is a weirdo one. Yeah. Because um, she, she starts off, and she's a retired cop. Yeah. OK? Yeah. But the problem is, throughout the... Now, she suddenly rings up. She's a retired cop, and there's a nutter on the loose who goes around. He's got quite a novel way of killing people. What he does is he ties their hands behind their back and then ties their hands to their feet behind their back, and then he puts a thick plastic bag around their head right. and tapes it around their neck, and they die through suffocation uh-huh. over a, a, a very long period of time. Seems a bit elaborate. Elaborate and painful, yeah. horrible death. Right. Now, she's an expert in this uh, form of killing, apparently. So she's retired, right. right? She's retired. And then these sort of killings start happening again. Uh-huh. So she is then taken back on right. by the cop shop that she worked at. Mm. But all the people there resent her. A lot of these crime dramas are very gory, aren't they? They're, they're gory and, they're, and they're, they're, they're too personality-led, are you? Oh, you know, into, like, uh, cop relationships and what's happening yeah. at home and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. So anyway, well, it's going to be true life, isn't it? So anyway, what happens is, what happens is, right? Um, she goes back to work, but throughout the whole of the episode one, mm. which you know I've seen a bit of, right? Right. Good. She looks like an eighteen-year-old walking around in a parker jacket. Seriously, is that her there? Uh, that's her there. Yeah. Now the it opens with her in a bath full of dirty water with her face all smashed up. Right. And we don't, won't know why that is until the end of the series. OK. So that's impossible to explain. Mm. But it means we're getting to, you know, some sort of gory subplot or it's something like, like that. Flashback, yeah. Now, the point is, what is unusual about this woman who was a cop mm. and never apparently rose above rank acting, of sergeant... Acting D.I. Uh, no, no, that's, uh, that's Saran Jones in a yeah. different uh, show is that she lives in this fantastic house in, like, Islington, North London. Uh-huh. So it's set in London? It's set in London. Right. Now then, what happens is, because, as I say, there's too many of this interrelationship stuff, mm. she, her husband has walked out on her. Right. And her husband is the chief executive of some big building group. Uh-huh. And he makes millions. Right. So that's why she's got a nice house in Islington. Oh, right, that would explain it. And is that why she's also in a bath full of dirty water? Well, I don't know that yet. Now, the point is, she's also got two children at boarding school. Now, you know, this to me is bad mothering. Yeah. Bad mothering. I thought you were in favour of boarding no, school. No, I'm not in favour of boarding schools at all. You're you have to, you to bring them up yourself. You're always great at eating and harrowing and Well, all that's, for, that's for, like, you know, that's for the upper classes. But, I mean, ordinary people, in my view, shouldn't send their children to boarding schools, right? Yeah. Unless they want to. Now, um, the point is, she is wandering around in this parker trying to solve the mystery of somebody else going around putting plastic bags around people's heads right. and suffocating them. Yeah. Is it a new killer who has got the same technique or is it the old killer doing it again? Or a copycat. Or, but the old killer appears to still be in jail, but right. he's on day release. Well, so it's not him, then? Well, it could be, because he's on day release. Why is he on day release? He was a killer. Uh, because I think he's come to the end of his sentence yeah. and they started integrating back into the community. Oh, I see that woman from Downton Abbey's in it as well. Downton Abbey? Yeah, is in this show. Downton Abbey woman? Remember Downton Don't, Abbey? Can you show me the picture of Lady this? Edith, isn't it? Oh, Lady Edith, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Now, she is. She is, actually. Mm. And I thought that was a bit of a, a wrong move because you've got a very minor part as a student of criminology right. who goes to see the guy who is the former uh, bag-over-the-head killer. OK who uh, Marcella believes to be the present killer. OK. You see what I mean? Right. Got it? Even though the other one doesn't think that. Eh? The other <laughs> the woman from Downton Abbey doesn't think that. Well, she's a criminology student, so she loves this guy. She's kind of falling So she up. thinks he's innocent. Yeah. Anyway, Marcella, Marella, Mariella, <laughs> finds out... No, hang on, hang on. She finds out that her husband, this chief executive, yeah. is actually... Roger Rising, oh, yes. the daughter of the company that he works in, and has now moved into her $5 million Who's home. Hey? Whose daughter? Well, he's the chief executive right. of a building company right. who, that's headed up by this very powerful woman played by that Irish actress. Who? I don't know, but I think she went out with George Best once. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously. You know what I'm talking no. about? No. Yeah, you're the Irish actress. She had a funny name and she went out with George funny Best. Funny name, Irish actress, yeah, went out yeah. with George Best. I can't think and, of her Anyway, I'll tell, I tell you what, George Best, old. George Best wouldn't give her bed space these days because she's actually grown very old. Well, also, he's dead. He's dead, of course, yeah. yeah. And um, and what happens is the chief executive guy has left his wife, who was a cop, that yeah. is Mariella, right. to go and shack up with the daughter mm. of the woman who is very powerful, the Irish actress woman. Okay. 
I wish I could remember her name. She's got like a strange Irish name, like you know, I don't know Mary. No, no, something like um, Is Isabella or something, something like Isabella. that. Isabella, something like that. I don't know. Isabella. Yeah, and and <laughs> and he lives with her daughter, right? Who also works at the well, company. She must be ancient if she's an ex George Best girlfriend. Oh, she is. She's very ancient. So how old? How, uh, young, a fa- is the, a face, so how young is the daughter? Then? A face looks like a root map of Ireland, to be honest. She likes sort of Charlotte Rampling type age. Yeah, that's right. And no, it's not her. No, it's not Charlotte. She's Rampling, not Irish. No. I wish I could remember her name. Sybin. Sinead. Sinead. Sybin. Sybin. No, I think it is Sybin. I think. What's your problem? Sybin. I think it is. I think it is. You know, S I O B H I N or something. That's Siobhan. Siobhan, okay. Well, it's the same thing. It's spelled yeah. like Simon. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of rodderisation going on in that department, okay? Right. But. Uh, Christ for that. The, the cop sergeant woman keeps turning down other cops who want to sort of give her one, you Good know what I mean? Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, yeah. Maybe so she it's a bit of a. Co- bath occasionally. It's a complicated plot, I have Sounds to say. It, yeah. Complicated. I'm looking forward to seeing how that one ends. Yes, yeah, well, Fantastic. we all are. I want to know why she's sitting in the bath with a bloodied face. And with side in. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. Mm. Uh, that was Porky Vision. I think you'll find you'll never hear anything like it. Uh, what a great review. This is Talk Thank Sport. You. Thank you. That, that's a real old sort of, uh, I think I'd have to say 80s, early yeah. 80s. Now, what's that? Sort of weird disco, sort of body talk. Body talk, right. Now, this is really important, this, OK? Yeah. Because I I, uh, I feel this is a form of education. The reason that we're talking about body talk is this, uh, uh, I've got a new book, and it's called Body Language oh, yeah. by Glenn Wilson, and it describes the mm. fact that actually what you say that comes out of your mouth... Yeah is much less relevant mm. to what your body is telling the person you're talking yes, to. Yes, I think that's quite interesting. That. And, 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 and it's a fascinating mm. book. Listen to this. Yeah. During a speech by Tony Blair at the 2003 Labour Party conference, Gordon Brown fiddled with his clothes 25 times. Yeah. He chewed his lip 12 times. He rubbed his face 25 is times. during Blair's speech? During yeah. Blair's speech. Right. Adjusted his cuffs 29 times, yeah. crossed and uncrossed his arms 36 times uh-huh. and looked away in a pained and weary manner 155 times. Yeah. In all, according to the behavioural psychologist Glenn Wilson, that's the man who's written this book, it's called Body Language, right? Yeah. Um, Brown made 322 discomfort signs. Despite what were presumably his best efforts, he simply couldn't stop himself from emitting a continuous stream of negative signals to Towards the prime, uh, towards uh, Tony Blair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I mean, as we all know, uh, there was nothing but negative energy between those two. Yeah, ex- exactly. Also, Mr. Wilson has studied the um, interview, the famous interview um, of Charles and Diana when they just announced their engagement. Yes. He said the future divorce was already uh, detected mm. in the excruciating awkwardness and body language. They didn't look at was each that, other. Was that the one where they asked him, um, are you in love? And he uh, went, Whatever oh, that means. Whatever that means. Yes, yeah, so I suppose, uh, whatever yeah. that means, yeah. Uh, what a thing to say, by the way. I you know. know. Just got engaged. So, you know, meanwhile, so, Camilla's hiding under the desk. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And, and this lady's going to become the Queen of England one day. And, yeah. and so are you in love, Charles? Uh, what do you say? Yes, he said, yes, whatever, that, whatever means. that means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, and she just looked so shy in those days as well. Didn't yeah, she? I mean, it'd be like. Imagine if somebody came over us after four bottles of wine yeah. and said, Are you too bladderated? Yeah. And we said, Yeah, whatever that means. Whatever that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Anyway. It's an interesting um, analogy. Anyway, if um, uh, Professor Wilson here has written this book, mm. says uh, if we'd have had any uh, knowledge at all about body language in yeah. the 50s, we would have found the spy ring immediately. He says that um, newsreel footage of Kim Philby yeah. um, showed that the man was completely untrustworthy and was almost certainly betraying his country. The man's arrogant, inappropriate smiles announced his treachery and duplicity loudly yeah. and clearly. How could the establishment pop- possibly have missed it? Mm. But nobody was reading body language in those days. Yeah, right. 
And of course, in the, the modern day sort of yeah. business world now, you're, sort of, you're encouraged to sort of try and be more open with people. And you're That's encouraged right. not to stand yeah. there with your arms crossed and legs crossed and yeah. all the rest of it, you know. And you're supposed to offer your sort of um, hand of friendship in a particular way. Yeah. Because I think, like most things, it can go a bit yeah. too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think body language is an interesting thing. Yeah. Now, what they're doing these days is mm. policemen who interview suspects yeah. are now being trained in body language, yeah. and it's as important as what they say. Yeah. So, for instance, um, uh, when close-ups of a suspect are examined frame yeah. by frame, it can be seen that a higher brain centre is cancelling a mood expression mm. that has been initiated automatically at a deeper level. Right. So your natural instinct to try and feign, uh, you know, uh, innocence yeah. can be overridden yeah. by, you know, the natural process of... Well, it's of, like that show, uh, Lie to Me. Have you seen brain. that show, Lie to Me, where there's an English guy who no. is, is hired by various people from companies to the military yes. to, to criminal uh, criminologists and yes. all that, because he studies people being questioned right. and tells you whether they're telling lies. Right. And he goes into this whole thing about yeah, yeah. You know, your eyes dilate yeah, yeah. a little bit more, your pupils oh, dilate. Oh, OK, all of you that. Know, all the th- different things happen. Do you know that, as usual, this is one of the reasons why Shakespeare is, to this day, still, you know, the genius playwright he was? Mm. The first ever reference to it came in a Shakespeare play. What, body language? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's this. Uh, the Shakespearean quote is, there is at last an art to find the mind's construction in the face. Uh-huh. How about that? Yeah, I see what to you mean. To find the mind's construction in the face. Yeah. The trouble is that the very people who are geniuses at controlling the leakage of deception and who can remain coldly mendacious under interrogation... Is this still Shakespeare? No, no, this is modern day, sorry. Oh. Well, there's, although these policemen have been trained, right, mm. the only people who can have control of the emotions to the extent where it makes it difficult for the body language experts are, guess what, pure psychopaths. Uh-huh. Yes, because they can lie... And you, you can't tell they're lying. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm. Right? Um, but in... Uh, what you, the... you came out as a psychopath, I think, when we did that quiz. Didn't no, you? I didn't. No, no, no. no, no you no. did? No, I didn't. I don't think there's anything wrong with you coming out as a psychopath, by the way. No, 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 no. In no, order no. to be a successful journalist, I think yeah. you kind of have to be. I don't think so. Yeah, don't. Anyway, look, it says here, it, and this guy has done tremendous research. Uh, in the US, for example, um, scientists have, have uh, discovered that any human being is fully capable of making 7,000 different faces, each having its own shade of meaning. Yeah. For instance, wrinkling the nose, crinkling or blinking the eyes, mm. puffing out the cheeks, giving the lips and mouths different shapes, flaring the nostrils, frowning or scowling. Right. Our faces are in constant flux as we go about manifesting anger, surprise, disgust, yeah. guilt, contempt, attraction, repulsion, interest or boredom. Yeah. Right? I agree. Well, there's nothing like catching somebody's expression when they don't think you're looking at them. Yes. In in, in kind of response to something that's going on. That's why they have two-way mirrors and watch people who are left on their own. Yeah, but, I mean, even in, in say, a a, a situation like that where you're in an interrogation room, you're probably aware of the fact that you're kind of under surveillance at some point or another. Yeah, I'm sure you are. If you're just looking at people generally out in the street or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a a journo, if Mm. you were out covering a story, you know, you could tell by people's reaction to something maybe how involved they were. Sure. You know? Now, uh, the figures here show that um, only 7% of communication depends on the actual words uttered. Of the rest, 55% is body language, Mm. i.e. gesticulating, fidgeting, seeming calm or or seeming anxious, and 38% involves the tone of voice. The tone of voice, loud, soft, cross, warm or humorous, is very important. Well, you see, it works differently on radio as well, doesn't it? Because you obviously can't see the person that's talking. Yeah. So there might be other ways that you would, you know, basically work out whether they're telling the truth or not. Yes. Judging by how they're speaking. Yes, that's right. I think that's fascinating. See this famous picture of uh, Princess Diana, which I'm showing you, with James Hewitt. Yes. Presenting him the polo trophy. Yeah. An expert looked at that mm. and seconds afterwards said those two are having a relationship. Oh, yeah? And said he could tell from Diana's coy smile yeah. as she recoiled before giving him the trophy. Yeah. I would say that's probably right? about right. Yeah. Well, I don't think... I mean, you wouldn't have to be, a, you know, a, an expert to suggest that, though, because everyone no. knew they were having an affair. No, no, this was years before the affair thing oh, right, came okay. out, seriously. Mm. And what I'm saying is, most people would say, oh, she's down in Prince as well, she couldn't possibly no, be having an that. affair with a cavalry officer. No, of course but, she wouldn't But say an that. expert who saw that, minutes after yeah. it was taken... Said those two are having a physical yeah. relationship. Well, you can I, tell. I, I can usually tell when yeah. people are doing that as yeah. well. Yeah. Now, I've got an update for you okay. on a guest we had last week. Do you remember the guy we had uh, on the show called Peter Berkowitz? I've got to thank Kevin for this. You tweeted this in. Living in a box. There was a man living in a box. Living in a wooden box. Guess what's happened to him? What? As a result of all publicity, he's been evicted. No. <laughs> From his box? <laughs> yeah. 
Why? Apparently, it was deemed a fire hazard by the uh, uh, by the health and safety uh, housing officials in, in San Frisco. Francisco. Yeah, my God, and he's uh, he's had to move back in with his parents. Oh, the poor guy. I hope we haven't done that for him. Well, I suppose we contributed to it, haven't we, by well, highlighting the have, situation? Yeah. Well, mind you, he's very willing to come on and talk to us he about this, isn't indeed, he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, poor guy. So, where's he living now? Do he's, we know? He's living with his family. He's, he's gone back with his parents. Where do they live? Well, I don't know. It doesn't say where well, they live. Well, I mean, live. do they live in San Francisco? Well, I assume so. Well, I mean, you know, if they do, then he's probably kept his job. If he if if he does, he's probably lost his job. That's a terrible fate well, to be self on somebody. You don't care. I do. I care for my fellow human being, yeah, particularly right. if I've had a. You know, uh, even a small role in his think, demise. Uh, do you think we could get him to send us the box over? We, yeah, send us the box, put man. Somebody, uh, put somebody in it in your head. Yeah, your we place. could go over and have holiday and stay in his box. Yeah. How about that? I don't fancy it. Rent a box. This is Talk Sport. It's a very complicated process of decoding. People yeah. worked out that's what you were singing earlier. Oh, uh, OK. So that's paranoid. It, yeah. That is Black Sabbath. Yeah, well, they would have, uh, from the way I sang it, they would have recognised the, the beat yes. and uh, the lyrics and the uh, the music. Yeah, now, Tom would. says uh, that has to be one of the most confusing Porky Pigeons I've ever heard. Why? But very amusing. I don't think there was anything uh, uh, confusing about it at all. Uh, By the way, yeah. somebody did remind me there was a bit of a lesbian scene in it. Well, there wasn't really, because, really? no, um, because I did see that bit. Mm. That's a young, um, horrible young woman villain right. who um, takes her clothes off on in a screen. Well, you know um, when people communicate by screen, what's it called? By screen? Yeah, yeah by uh, laptop, you know, what's it called? What? You mean face, FaceTime? Uh, Skyping? Sky- Skyping, Skyping. So, well, so she's talking to somebody on a sort of video call. Yeah, and this, and, and then the person types out, "Please take your clothes off." So right. she takes her clothes off, and then okay. you know, "Please do things to yourself," and she does it and all that kind of stuff. Well, like what? So, uh, well, I'm not going into that. This is a family show. But does it actually have specifically, "Please do this"? And yes, then yes, yes, exactly. Do that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, right. and all that kind of stuff. And does she but, do them? Yes, yeah, she does. Yes, yes, and <laughs> it's you know, it's it's not. Uh, it's not it's not comfortable viewing, and anyway, but but, but then she goes out and she meets people, you know, for money. She's mm. like a she's a hooker. She's prostitute. Does she live in Cheltenham. No, no, there are no hookers in Cheltenham. <laughs> and um, and what she does is, and she doesn't mind if she sleeps with men or women. Right. So the lesbian scene you're talking about was her sleeping with a woman. Oh, right. but so then, that's separate from the computer thing. Oh, separate from the computer thing. But then that's she, very raunchy. This show. Then she drugs her victims, you mm. know, with somehow. And then she robs their flat oh, yeah. uh, of everything, you know, watches, b- jewellery, and then she goes round to a second-hand jewellery shop yeah. and flogs it all right. to the fence, you know, okay. the guy's well, like fence. like a pawn shop. Like, like a P-A-W-N yeah, pawn shop. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and what she's done is she's made a mistake because the last client she ripped off, he comes on and says, I want you to do things to yourself. And he says, we've got a sharp knife. Right. And then she thinks he's just a nutter. Right. And then he says, I'm going to put that knife in you up to the hilt because you stole my watch. You yeah. stole from me. I'm after you. And all this sort of dark, horror stuff. Isn't it? Dark, it is dark. I'm not but sure it's anyway, good. It's not sort of good family viewing, that. Well, it's not good family viewing. These shows are very kind of disturbing. Well, you've got to remember, I watch them for our millions of listeners to warn them whether they should be watching yeah. them. And I have to say that one, I would say, no, you probably shouldn't. Well, you Steve know? says, I've watched Marcella and Porky has single-handedly ruined it. It's much better than his description. No, I've told you a, a very accurate um, Gemma account. says, is Sire Bin related to Gunga Din or Dusty Bin? <laughs> Dusty Bin, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, where's you been? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, lots and lots mm. more, but we haven't got time to read mm. them out. Now, uh, tomorrow, uh, it is, of course, Porky Quiz Night. Yes. And uh, it's on the American Civil War. American Civil War. Um, so uh, I've got to, I'm going to be quite busy today, so I probably won't see any questions until much later on tonight. Oh, really? Yeah, and then yeah, there's some yeah. kind of a, um, a, a celebration party thing going on, which we may or may not attend. Oh, I can't uh, get to that, I'm afraid. But uh, I'll let you know about that a bit later on. I don't do partying. Yeah, Remember, I I've had my heart checked out. You can't. Look at the light! Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as busy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. Men who go around cycling a lot yeah. are in danger of shortening their penises. <laughs> Sorry, what's your problem? <laughs> how, how would that work? Well, it, it, it happens. How can you shorten your penis? It, it happens. <laughs> uh, doctor... <laughs> Sorry. You're supposed to take this seriously. I this am, this, this I is am. a medical condition. Yeah, is it?
this is a medical term. Yeah. I'm not being rude here, but it is known in the medical industry as saddle balls. <laughs> If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053am and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. Because you don't sit naked on a couch, No, do you? of course you I don't. mean, you wouldn't do that. No, of course I wouldn't. 